Hey there, Weed Between the Wines listeners, Big Casino here. You know we love bringing you the latest cannabis and wine reviews and insights, but we need your support. Help us grow our family of shows by visiting our Patreon link and donating $5 today. Your contributions will help to complete our studio upgrades and will help us travel to interviews and exciting events throughout the year. Also, make sure you're following us on Instagram at Weed Between the Wines, me personally on Instagram at Big Casino 420 and check out our website at weedbetweenwines.com. And as always, thanks for letting us help you weed between the wines. Callie, Callie, what? We got to go on this podcast. What podcast? Weed between the wines, dude. Oh, Come on. Big Casino? Dude. Oh, bro, I'm ready. Weed between the wines. Can I get a dab? You just took a dab. Oh, I'm, I'm, no, I know. I'm ready for another one. Man. What is shaking? Welcome back to another quick sesh with Big Casino. I'm your host, Big Casino. This week, joined by a special musical group. We got the Water Boys, yeah. Chad and Lieutenant Callie joining me today. Special shout out to Brad. Couldn't make the trip out, but hey, he's working hard on that Turp Wars too, he brother. He is. So uh, thanks again for joining me out the studio. I know it's not, a, not an easy poke out here. Hey. Um, so I love we in the nine, baby. Hell yeah, love it out here. Hell yeah, I, and we love the Water Boys out here. You know, I think the first time uh, we crossed paths was at Hashel Island, For sure. it, and it went off. It went God. off, and actually, you guys joined the show then too. So yeah. I'm saying, right? Yeah, we did so a like, yeah, 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 after yeah. show interview. Hell yeah! So listeners already know a little bit about you guys. This is the quick sesh where we dive more into the individual, the group side of things, and talk more about you know your life and and yeah, how you got yeah. to where you are. We love how, to talk about it. How the Water Boys started percolating. You know what I mean? Um, Gotta keep the water percolating. Hell yeah. Percolating. Oxygenated, right? (laughs) That's the that's the. When it's ready too, bro. Okay, so tell me about that sound that we're hearing right now in the background. (laughs) That's the sound from the dab, right? You know, it's letting me know that my my uh, banger is at about 530 degrees. Okay. And then I want to go ahead and hit this dab. What you dabbing up? Or maybe Callie could tell me. Fill me in. What did you just take a dab of? (laughs) It's all good. I'll (laughs) let him answer when he's done ribbing. You feel me? Why don't you tell me about this hash hole we're smoking right man, quick? Man, we just sparked up a feel good hash hole, man. Shouts okay. out to feel good, smoking on feel good, man. It's a whole lot of love. <coughs> Some gas pack right there. Hell yeah. <coughs> I think no. I was dabbing feel good. That's a trill a trilly Kimber with the fucking Mamba's rosin. <coughs> a trilly Kimber. I ain't never heard of that. <laughs> Trilogy, Ooh, man. That's some fire. Hey, shouts yeah. out to Mabo Rabo sitting in sure. the studio, as well as Bubbly Brooks sitting in the background. We all smoking yeah, hard. Getting high yeah, so. as fuck. So Whole what, lot of water shit. What are you dabbing up right there, Chad? That was some feel-good lime wire. Oh, okay. Mm. <laughs> I, I got you guys a little some some special today to dab up on. We got this Punch Extracts White Thorn Rose half and half out of Huckleberry Hills Farm. Okay. Sweet. This okay. shit's insane. Blood of turps. If, if you ain't seen it yet, like, this is where it's at. This is the truth. Uh, the flower smells just as good, and it smokes just as good. Smells crazy. That's a sure 50-50, you know, a half yeah. fresh press, half cold uh, mm. cure. Oh, wow. But yeah. uh, to be honest, looking at the jar, it looks like maybe there was a little bit of temperature seepage there. Oh, yeah. But, you know. The fresh press will do it to you. You don't exactly. keep it cold, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it's one, still one got, day, you already curing up. Like, it's <laughs> still gassing, though. Oh, so I can't wait to hit this. Sometimes that's my favorite when the fresh press that one gets of, a little fucking, you know what I'm saying? They got that one available locally? Hell yeah, I picked this up at uh, Symb- Symbio- Symbiotic? Symbiotic. I think it's Symbiotic up in uh, Sacramento. Yep. Uh, real good price, too. 45 bucks for that. And that's a tier one out of punch. Yeah, like, that's far. That's high quality, so... Keep your eyes out for White Thorn Rose at a dispensary near you. Uh, I know Delta Boys has it too, so shout out to the Delta Boys. Hell yeah, um, 209 shit, man. So let's dive into the Water Boys specifically. You know, uh, Turp Wars 1, which was released on YouTube yep. uh, June 2nd of 2023. That was a huge success. Uh, can you tell us about what's in the upcoming Turp Wars 2 dropping on New Year's Eve? It's gonna be There's lit. a Keep lot of out. really cool surprises in it. The biggest things I'm excited about in it is we got Hank Trill. Mm. You heard. You know, he's that rapper that sounds like Hank Hill. Hell yeah. He's doing a voice in it. We got... Uh, Does he else? do Damn It Bobby? Is that who runs God that damn shit? Damn It Bobby. God no, Damn, damn it, it Bobby's Bobby. a different guy. Oh, okay, That's okay. I've been seeing that yet. hash out there too. Hell, uh, and I, was, I thought they were the same dude. That's funny. 
And then we got Nether Friends doing some voices in it. Who else are we getting in? Trap House Trap Coda. House Coda. Hell yeah, shout yeah. out. Shout out to Trap House Coda. We got Coda. Mabo in it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. We got Mabo. a little cameo. So the we, local head. We're really just yeah. trying to put on for the community and get as many cool people in it as we can. I love it. We're trying to get Sour Waves and Kapow in it. Now, we should say, for listeners who aren't as familiar with Turp Wars, it's a, it's a parody, uh, a cannabis parody of... Star oh, Wars. Hell yeah. I have I fucking love it, guys. <laughs> like I, know, I watched okay. Turp Wars one and I was like, bro, I'm sold. Like this shit, there's so many different avenues that, that can be taken with this parody with the, the whole yeah. music and, and movies and man, I think you guys got it. I think you got I'm really looking forward to Turp Wars too. I'm excited. Hell yeah, yeah we got a sponsorship from uh Toro. Oh yeah. Uh for Big it. Shit, so man. it's like it's it, not only did you like it, it seems like the industry and the community is really fucking with it. Yep. And, and you guys are popping off at all these events too. Like I'm seeing yeah. left and right, bro. Hey, bro. That's yeah, we how did we like it, six or seven shows in the last three months. That's sick. Yeah, yeah. I've seen you at least two myself. So yeah. you know, and I don't go out to concerts, so that, that just means <laughs> you guys are showing up. Man, and we the really whole do. while we're doing turf wars, it's crazy. Straight like, up, dropping skits. I don't know if you've seen the commercials we've been making I, for people and stuff. Yes, sir. Yeah, I love it. Uh, you, well, you did the dab right, right? Yeah. You did one yeah. for those. The new Darby dab rights. Yep. Now tell tell listeners a little bit about the dab culture. Like you said, you like yours at five eighty. No, I like it to tell me at five fifty, but I'm really looking to go in at about five hundred. The five fifty is just like, hey, get ready. Yeah, 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 because it's gonna cool down. Yeah, as you're yeah. waiting. I got you. And that sound you hear in the background, that's his uh, torch. Torch in. <laughs> no, not a big deal, bro. I, I was just saying, oh, yeah. like, so listeners know, you know, Hell well, we yeah. don't got that seven forty seven flying through the studio. <laughs> That would be fire, though. They said, what was that noise that kept coming on? <laughs> Con air. Oh, man. Uh, tell me a little bit about what influenced the the Water Boys. Uh, was it something before Lieutenant Callie hopped in, or was it kind of like a melting of the minds? Well, will take that off. They got started before I hopped in. Yeah, I just, uh, I've been working in cold rooms and growing weed for what feels like a lifetime now, about 15 years. And so I just always felt like a water boy. You know, I move water for a living. Either I'm watering plants or I'm lifting buckets of water into machines. But uh, that coupled with my love of Adam Sandler movies, Water Boys has got to <laughs> be it. Water Boys got to be one of my favorite movies. Hell yeah! Uh, Were you like mid thirties? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm thirty two. Yeah. Man, you you couldn't grow up in the nineties without having fucking Billy Madison. Waterboy, <laughs> yeah. any of those fucking... You know what's crazy about Waterboys? The only reason why it blew up was because when it came out in theaters, the only way you could see the Phantom Menace trailer was in the Waterboys movie. That's hella smart. That's Look at that. Crazy. Look at that it's fucking crazy, like, the, the crossover coincidence. We ended up doing Turp Wars as Waterboys, and like that's going to be a thing that makes us blow up. You know, So Star Wars is coming through for Waterboys reality on hell yeah. multiple Dang. levels. How about a do it? How about a do it? Mama, 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 needed some hash, let me tell you. It's too old. No, we got, a, we got a hoodie that says mama said hash is the devil. Yeah. About to run it back, new color range. That's hella funny. <coughs> Listeners, we you know. Up. You know I don't smoke that rosin, so... Ah, <laughs> that hash will get you. Hell yeah, brother. I'm a flower Ooh. man through and through. Nah, Speaking of that. which, I got to give a shout out to our show sponsors today. Hell yeah. Of course. We got Elbow Farms. Good guys. Jay out of, uh, you know, the Antioch, Brentwood. Shout out to Elbow. Yeah, yeah shout out to right. Elbow out of Antioch, Pittsburgh, Brentwood area. It'll get you every time. Every I time. I'm like, hey. <laughs> Mabo, shut that shit off. The one, the one I got my set to, <laughs> it goes... That's a little funny. Dab right, man. Temp your dabs right. This is also an ashtray, by the way. So. I was ashing it. I hope so. Yeah. I was like, if it's not an ashtray, I'm need... like an asshole right now. <laughs> I need to put a sign on that. <laughs> be like, please use this. <coughs> we all coming up shit right now. Turn it down, but I can't turn it off. <coughs> You're good. You can turn it off. You know, I say we dab like Mad Men. Yeah, we It'll do. It'll be going off every every couple minutes. It's like, damn, bro, how much hash are they smoking? Right. Yeah, so big shout out to sponsor of the show, Elbow Farms, out of the Contra Costa area, uh, Oakley, Brentwood. Jay hooked up with, uh, with us for this episode to bring you guys some fresh flowers. So we got the, the Jelenade. We got the Yellow Pluot. Which I was is pretty, smelling that one earlier. I want to smell crazy. Pretty fire. I'm smelling this parfait right now. I smell like some loud pack. Yeah, and my, my favorite personally is the uh, maraschino cherries. That shit's fire. Yeah. I like that. I, I'm a big fan of cherry gelato, so 
you know, whatever. Crazy. You you can hate oh, on wow. it, but I'll smoke it all, so give it my way. Oh, the world yeah. loves candy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they love candy, but it's like there's this taboo against something that gets too popular, and then they're like, mm. oh, fuck that shit, even though it's fire. Yeah. You know, so big shout out to Elbow for sponsoring the show. Hell yeah. Also, Sanctuary Farms, you know, we had them on uh, earlier this year, and they threw us a good smattering of flavors here. You can smell them all. Some of them are fresh out of the garden. Uh, Fino hunt ones. We got ones that aren't released yet, so definitely take a look at what they got, and, yeah. and we'll smoke some up Love later. Love the fresh flower, you know what I'm saying? Big shout out to Elisa and uh, Jew on the farm for hooking us up with those. So appreciate you guys. What what inspired <laughs> the creation of Water Boys? I got a homie. He been practicing cartoons for years. He's just been animating. He's been on tour with the in a metal band called Amir. So he toured the whole world and the whole time. He was just figuring out how to animate. And then somewhere in the middle of that, I popped off this brand that was just blowing up. You know, we were doing cool merch and stuff, and he had the idea to just make little skits about the industry. And at every turn, it's kind of just had a mind of its own. We didn't expect to make music. It's just we needed music for the skits, so we started making music, and now, you know, some people don't even know we make cartoons. They just think we make music. Some people... Don't it's know multi- we make music. They just think we make cartoons. It's, it's a multi layer approach. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. You you can't just grab one side <laughs> of the market. You gotta get that music. You gotta get the animation. You gotta get that hash. Oh god. And then Cali comes in and bringing that musical style. Yo, he's got a lot of flavor. Oh. Hell yeah. And, and so bringing the sauce. You know, we'll we'll maybe get into it uh, in a little bit. But I, I saw your interview on Rap Shack. Yo. And you said that you got a hot 16 always memorized, so I'm going to test you on that later. Oh, bro. Yo, you gonna, you got a Rap forever, Shack interview bro. I ain't seen? Oh, hell yeah, bro. Shouts Four out years Rap ago. Shack, man. That's my boys over there, Corey B. Hell yeah. Yeah. It, he's elusive. You know, oh, I, I feel lucky. I think this is the first interview with the Water Boys, like, officially in the studio. Have you guys done anything else? We did a we podcast uh, for TSV TV, or it was like a oh, Twitch yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Terp CV, right? Yeah. 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 And then we've Sounds been on like the radio. Homies. Out there, KDVS, Hip Hop Truck yep. Stop. I saw that. You guys were giving out some uh, some free tickets, <laughs> yep. VIP yeah. and general admission, yeah, so like, that's tight. Yeah. Love to see that. Uh, but this would probably be one of the more... Yeah, this is one of the first interviews is with a real concentrated idea on what our plan is. Yeah, I love you know it. I mean? I, I love yeah. to get it at the, at the ground floor and then just watch you guys... Straight all the way up, and then I can be like, "Hey, I knew them when, you know. <laughs> I had them sitting right here, you bro. I got that me? mat signed on my wall, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> I love it. I love uh. it. Uh, now, I know that you said that Brad is kind of the artistic person behind the 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 uh, animation. Is there any different expressions you guys bring to those characters that you're like, oh, hey, yeah. this is how I want it designed? Um, not so much design, just you know, we we play a huge role. Me and Cali, and just understanding the community, the cannabis community, mm-hmm. and yeah. so that's we bring the culture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He brings the art. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Obviously, he's actually the guy that taught me how to grow weed. You know, 15 yeah, years he ago. Yeah, he in it too. Yeah, but, for sure. Uh, but yeah, just, <coughs> we all kind of do something that no one can do. Mm-hmm. Straight up, and a lot of the times, I mean, we'll sit together in a session where we're recording and just go off the dome. Yeah. We'll say, "This is the setting we want to portray, and let's figure out what's going to happen right now." I love we'll that. We'll just, you know, improv and freestyle it off the, you know, Hell jump yeah. and really just create this stuff as we go. Not all the times we do write a lot, but, like, that's the fun. When you that's get where high it starts. and you just run it up like that, Hell man. Yeah. Oof. That's where you start creating those ideas that maybe you write down later and you're like, oh, shit, like, we didn't fully flesh this out. Let's let's see what we can do with this. Straight that's up. where we're finding ourselves now. We have so much content that we've created that we're able to go back and... Mm-hmm. Revisit it like the dab fish concept. We're gonna do, we just Running did the dab fish, dab album. fish episodes. Yeah, we're gonna do some dab fish episodes and uh, love it. Turp wars, we're not gonna stop doing turp wars. We're gonna do some hash holes, uh, holes, New cartoons spoofs, coming. you know, Shia LaBeouf. Holes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I saw that on YouTube. Was it just one song? That it's an album, it's album, a yeah. whole album. Okay, because I was like, oh shit, I know you guys were talking about that, but I didn't know it dropped. Yeah, so I'm gonna have to check that shit out. Yeah, Cause we that's just a hella funny hash concept. holes. We just dropped dab fish. We've been dropping music like a madman. Yeah, we a whole got lot a of Nether Friends collabs. We've been we doing. We got Turp Wars the album coming out. We got yep. Turp Wars the soundtrack coming out. We got a Christmas album coming out. What? Right up. Oh right fuck album, yes, bro. Lieutenant right. Cali on fucking <laughs> you know what I'm sings Happy Hanukkah, bro. I love it. <laughs> Straight you know. up. That's just what we said. Oh, bro. That shit's oh, God, fucking dope. Man. Look at that Ash Jenga yeah. going right now. We linked up with Nether Friends, and it really made the music just go crazy. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. So Nether Friends, they're doing, <coughs> if, I may be mistaken, but one album a week? An album a week, What yeah. the fuck, bro? That's like Over some Chris 200 Webby. albums. That's insane. 
How does he even do that? How do you work with a guy who's turning over music that quick? It's hard. That's <laughs> that's why we're able to work with him actually, because not everybody can do that. Yeah. And a lot of people get caught up trying to make things perfect or whatever. And he's really, we're just getting better by constantly using the sword. We're, we're constantly in the battlefield writing raps, making albums, and you know, every song gets better because mm-hmm. of that. Because we're not stopping. So repetition is just making us beasts. I love it. How fast do you guys turn around, like, from idea oh, to finished song? So check this out. Whoa. We had the Dabfish idea. It's Thursday night. Mm-hmm. We got the Dab... No, it's Friday morning. We had the Dabfish idea. I text Nether Friends. He says, I'll have the beats to you before you get on the plane. We get the beats... How long until you're on the plane, by the way? The, later that day. Yeah. Oh, damn. Like, yeah, eight, eight hours, six hours, yeah, something eight like hours. that? eight hours. We're, on the, we're okay. getting on the airplane at, like, four. That's crazy. And I just get them. So I download them. I send them to Cali. We all get on the plane. We're flying to Houston. We got an hour flight to Vegas, and then from there we're going to Houston. Mm -hmm. By the time we landed in Vegas, I already wrote all nine songs for my parts. From here to Vegas, yeah, hour and a half. Yeah, that's like forty-five minutes, really, in the air. Like you might you might take an hour to get from you know stop to stop, but like in the air, you're in forty-five minutes, bro. So then, by the time we landed, we landed at six a.m. in Houston. We wake another friends up. He turns the computer on. We record the album. It's done. Before ten thirty in the morning, straight up. So really, we're really. talking twenty four hour damn near turnaround time with travel. That's crazy. And but so you wrote the songs, but did you record the actual? We recorded them when we landed. It was straight done up. by eleven. Nuts. Everybody had all their long. parts done that day. You gotta look we up like what's happen. the record for fastest album? I think it might be one of the records. Bro. Another friend said he never did that before, and he turns music out. So what's the name of that album? Uh, that's the Dabfish album. Dabfish. Yeah, okay. Just that it one just too, came man. out. It's got some real crazy records on there. It's all about people getting scammed by a yeah. Telegram link stuff. Man, it's fuck them coming. Telegram scammers, man. Bro, real talk. I got somebody who was jumping on the weed between the wines. Name they put just a little uh, underscore yep. before it, and oh, it's yeah. like hit me on Telegram, yeah. boys backpacks or some shit. I'm like, bro. <laughs> and I, I feel if bad you're for making the money, honestly if you're making money off my podcast Bro. like good for you because I can't do that <laughs> <laughs> I always think of it like uh, you know I hate that they're out there scamming people but all these t- fake pages they got my videos on them you know they got 15 20,000 followers so like our footprint's huge because of them straight so up it's crazy. any press right any press hey, man, press. but please do not there click the be. telegram <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. there will never be a water grant a water boys telegram never link. never no. never don't, I don't even trust think that like shit. ever i don't trust that i don't trust discord i don't trust instagram yeah. like nothing for sale we're out nah. here making music yeah, making yeah, cartoons yeah, yeah. we smoke terps we don't sell them 100 yeah, you know yeah. anybody who who's yeah. thinking <laughs> <laughs> That's a shirt coming soon. Smoke yeah. turfs don't sell them. Exactly. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Fucking love it, dude. Ugh. You guys are talking about linking up with Trap House Coda. I know you just dropped the Yurt, hash, yep. hash rules me. Uh, no, sorry. Hash rules everything around me. It's a big record. Yeah, <laughs> dude. And I was just talking to him last night on Instagram Live. Do you guys have anything in the works for maybe in the future? Oh, yeah. yeah we got a lot of records coming. Lots of Hell stuff. yeah. He, he came out. He drove about four hours to see us in New York. or well, New Jersey, where our Airbnb was. We recorded his uh, lines for Turf Wars 2. We recorded a couple tracks. Straight up. Since uh, we've sent a couple records to him, he's recorded. We got Dabs on the Beach remix coming back. You know, because he's from Dabs Vir- on the Beach. Yeah, he's from Virginia Yo. Beach. So <laughs> Hell we yeah. had to do. We got Mabo on there. Damn, oh, he's from Virginia Beach. Yeah, yeah. He's, it's, so it's gonna make it official. He's gonna he's bringing the legitimate legitimacy to the record. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm not from the beach. <laughs> this is uh, yeah, man. I I didn't know that because our boy uh, Tony Espo. Rest in peace. He's from Virginia Beach, and oh, I guess yeah. Trap knew him. So, oh, yeah. um, the roller, right? Yeah. yeah, you know we gotta stay up for for Tony and the whole community. So, hell yeah. Um, but yeah, Trap House. He's putting out a lot of content too, man. Oh, man, God. shout out that old Silverado record. It's got over 13 million streams on all Ooh. platforms. Check it out. Check Straight. out my boy Coda. Uh, he's boy. he's a, for real a water boy. Hell oh, yeah. God. Now what's what's Coda smoking when you guys go out there, or he comes out oh, here? We send him some stuff. You yeah, know? we make sure yeah, he's smoking know. on that real water shit. That good shit, that good Cali shit. Yeah. That, <laughs> that's what everybody says, man. And no matter where you go, it's like if I'm smoking good shit, it's Cali. I got the West Coast alchemy, glob in the bang. You got to think about how many trends are started in the West Coast though, outside of weed. It's just kind of the way the world works. Things start here and they move east. Hundred yeah. percent. I don't yeah. know why that is. But, you know, free the cars get here. cool here. You know, the <laughs> outfits are, they decide what's cool here. I know New York's got its motion and all that, but. But ain't nothing happening in the mid, you know. That, just mids in the Midwest, yeah. you know what I mean. 
Hey, that's, I'm just kidding. I love <laughs> I love Michigan, bro. My boy Brent from they got Flower some Mill. They fire out there. Hell yeah. They, they got, do. Honestly, Don't get twisted. The government's behind everywhere because, like, we could grow good shit anywhere now, you know, with the indoor. I mean, shit, I got a, three plants in that closet right now, and they're growing, <laughs> like, wildfire. You yeah. know what I mean? So, like, if, if you got a if you got a closet, you can hey, grow. Hey, man, if you got the attention to detail and you know what you're doing, you can make fire anywhere. A lot of the East Coast, it's, you know, they're doing something, but they ain't doing it right. I have seen a good amount of people that are doing it right, though. You couldn't tell what coast it came from type shit. True. It's it's wild. Do you guys link up with Yummy Farms or Yummy Brands uh, at Hash Hole Island? They were out in New York. I haven't seen them yet. I've seen them in the comments. Though. Heard okay. about them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, had some, heard about them. they had some fire, some gas uh, we got to try on the show. So Hell keep an eye yeah. out for Yummy. Um, growing some, some good butt out in New York, you know. North, I think North State, New York, but... That's dope. That's good, dope. Good people out there. Hell yeah. Um, tell me about some of your like uh, artistic influences. Who who do you guys listen to? Uh, who are you into when it comes to music or art that that's really inspiring you for Waterboys? Man, that's a crazy question. Yeah, a lot of Bay I mean, Area I, rap. I mean, I'll, straight, Fifty uh, Cent on a business level. This, you know yeah, what I'm he was hey, real 50 talk cent, though. Bro. Yeah, he's got it figured out. Yeah, he went from hey. Fifty Cent to one dollar real quick. Oof. Doubled up, but it's—I mean—it's the Bay for me, for real. I've been listening to a lot of Bay artists since a kid, man. It's just Mac Dre, Two Story, E Forty. Yeah, E Forty. That's one of my uh, when I created the show. He's one of the guys on my dream board to get because that—I mean—if you're from the Bay, <coughs> you fuck with E. <coughs> oh, for sure. You Tell gotta fuck with E Forty. Yes, bro. Everybody, you <coughs> you from the Bay and you hear that. Man. Boom, 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 when I was 18, I got signed with Rapping Forte out the Bay Area, man. We was fucking doing a lot of Bay shit. Yeah. Now, you guys, uh, you're out of Lodi, you said originally? Yup. Where are you out of? I'm from Stockton. Stockton? Okay, yeah. okay. Hey, we're all local boys now. It's 209 yeah, it's to the universe, yeah. man. Hell yeah. It's it's a little quiet corridor, but we do some work out here. I wouldn't say it's that quiet. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of gunshots. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Out, out in Stockton for sure. He's I guess Rio loud. Vista's a little quieter. You know <laughs> what I mean? Rio I'll say it's pretty quiet out here. <laughs> Shuts down at about seven. In our, isn't that right, Mabo? Shoes. Why I'm out here? Unless, <laughs> hey, uh, unless you're at Rio Vista Farms, then you got those old biddies coming through all day long, bro. Getting those gummies and shit. <laughs> That's all that's good over there is the gummies. Yeah. So the gummies. Actually, not true, because now you're carrying that Lucy Hashko. Oh, and I right, know that right. shit's fire, right. bro. You got to shout out to the boys. Yep. You got to shout out to Lucy. Yeah. Go back and listen to that episode with Vince Perdue. He's running that shit now. That's the boy from the day. Uh, you know, back back in high school. That was my homie. So l- uh, run it up for us and uh, give him some love at Rio Vista Farms, Delta Boys, wherever you see that Lucy Hashko. Fuck yeah. You guys had their shit yet? I haven't seen tried it. it before. No. They were at uh, uh, Hashville <laughs> Island. But uh, we'll have to link you guys up. They're putting out some crazy terps right now, bro. Ew. All hand, like, I don't know if it's hand washed, but it's all like smaller batches. Like, I, they're not putting shit out if it isn't passing Q, uh, QC. QC. So, mm-hmm. you know. But uh, you guys play instruments too? I do. Yeah? Yeah, I play piano, guitar, drums. Well, I have a keyboard. Oh, no, I'm man. just kidding. I say, uh, let's go. <laughs> I ain't the best on the piano. I'm better on a guitar for sure, but okay. I, I'll impress you on some shit for sure. What about you? I cannot play all those instruments like Callie can. All good. But I can, uh, I'm, I feel like I'm fairly musically inclined. I can pick up a pair of drumsticks and keep a, a rhythm uh, without any zero training. I mean, when so you I'm guys are rhythmic. <laughs> you got to be with these songs, man. Nah, like, there's all different up. kinds of beats in there. You got the reggae, you got the fucking boom bap. Yeah, for example, Dabs on the Beach was the first song I ever made. Wow, that one's a hitter, too. Like, <laughs> yeah. that's got a good little hook. Yeah, and it was a one take freestyle. I, you know, he was like, "Yo, that's it." He's like, "Stop! I gotta turn the mic on." We turned the mic on. I just recorded it, and the rest is history. I've been making music ever since. That's hella funny, bro. How long ago was that? A year and six months, maybe. <laughs> that's we got two hundred thousand, two hundred thousand streams since. We got one hundred fifty thousand streams on YouTube. Uh, yeah, I feel super blessed. Uh, you know, it's Thanksgiving or the day after. I'm super thankful up, for all the fans out there listening. Hell yeah. God, we do it for the community, man. We do it for y'all. We love y'all for real, for real. That's, that's why we in here, bitch. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. I love it, man. It's First and foremost, it's for the plant, for the community. and Because if you're not here for that, like, you can smell it. Oh, God. You can smell that shit out. Hey, folks. You know I spend my own money and time researching the best in recreational California cannabis brands, and I'm here to tell you about one of my absolute favorites, Snowtill Organics. 
the Bay Area's premier living soil, no-till, indoor-grown cannabis company. I know fans of Weed Between the Wines like to hear about the best new brands and products on the market, and soon, you'll be able to find these lush, vibrant buds at a dispensary near you. And I have to attest, this is some of the most stunning flower I have ever laid eyes on. At Snowtill Organics, they're not just growing cannabis, they're crafting an experience. Snowtill's dedication to the art of no-till living soil allows nature to do its thing, creating a sustainable ecosystem that produces top-tier flower with buds that are bursting with natural flavors, aromas, and of course, potency. No chemicals, no shortcuts, just pure premium cannabis. Whether you're a seasoned enthusiast or a curious newcomer, Snowtill Organics has something for everyone. The carefully curated strains cater to diverse preferences, offering a symphony of aromas and effects. Coming soon to a retail shop near you, find Snowtill online at www.snowtill.com and on Instagram at Snowtill Organics. Why settle for ordinary when you can experience the extraordinary? Snowtill Organics, because you deserve the best. Uh, tell me about some of your first times rocking the stage. You guys remember like that first... Hashhole what? Island was one of the first performances I <laughs> yeah, ever did. Because everything else is online, right? Yeah. Damn, that's crazy, bro. How was that? Because it I, was I, amazing. I played I, a couple shows, and I know, like, leading up, you're like, oh fuck, like I hope it goes well, but you know what to do. But then when you're in it, it's so fast that you're just like, oh. in the moment, it just happens. Bro. Yeah, you, it's like second nature. The biggest issue I had was I had just got my tooth pulled about three days before, four days before. He did. So I was, <laughs> it was hurting. Yeah. And uh, but once I went up there, I forgot all about my tooth. You know, I ended up hurting it a little bit rapping, but shit, it was the time of my life. Yeah, and just medicate it. with some dabs on the beach, you know? Man. Yeah, I wasn't able to dab. I wasn't able you to smoke will. a hashtag oh, island, bro. Hey, he was taking nose dabs. I Don't did take a nose dab. <laughs> 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 and I was eating some mushroom caps. Yeah, a nose dab. Oh, are, you, fuck. are you gonna hit this dab uh, casino? Absolutely. I'm actually yes. gonna fucking get some of this shit, bro. This yes. this punch. Oh yeah. Huckleberry oh, Hill Farms, oh. White Thorn Rose. Oh, Big shout out to John up on the hill, bro. He's putting it out. Uh, is this okay? It's semi clean. No, I got, I got one right here. Okay. Or I should. Yeah, yeah. You see, it's too good for my tool. No, 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 bro. I just <laughs> look, bro. Look, bro. You gotta respect the fucking tier <laughs> one. Is all I'm saying, brother. You know what I mean? So, Bert Chrysler, Chrysler. Oh, yeah. He just had this shit on the show, oh, that's dope. and he was talking about it. And he was like, bro, like this stuff is I crazy. Need to at Bert. Bro, that's that's what I'm saying, bro. He's like this white, but it's like to be to be really honest, this stuff is very special. This is like this white thorn rose is only grown on one farm up in the Humboldt County uh, or the Emerald Triangle, I should say. And it's it's the flower itself as a flower guy. It's probably top three I've ever had in my life. Man, it's some incredible shit that they're doing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we brought, we brought some heat. We ain't gonna lie. We got a lot of, you know, West Coast. We got some different shit. I'm gonna come around and I'm gonna hit it over there. Just so we don't have to pass around this hot banger. What do you call those? Uh, the, the nails? You got it. Yeah, it's called a, sl- a slurper. Yeah. Slurper? That's a tarp slurper. Right, I'm coming on to the other side of the desk for once. <laughs> He's over in enemy this territory. Hash smoke. This is rare. You know what I'm saying? We got... We got about two minutes before it's gonna oh, be okay. no, maybe no, a minute. He said, and a half. We, he said we still <laughs> hot. We still hot. We're, oh shit! Man. Yeah, we got perfect perfect temperatures coming at you. He's good. And I'll come around here and I'll do the the pod from here till it cools down. Hell yeah, my guy. So I'm seeing the too hot on the thing. Tell me about your Halloween. Uh, I guess Bart and Lisa Simpson skit about oh, the, the too tra- hot slurper trap house of horrors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. Oh, it's just a little skit we made about people out there dabbing too hot. And uh, the real point of the skit was is that if it says too hot on the screen, you shouldn't even have that banger over it. You'll thermal shock it. Yeah, you're like melting the real. internals. Yes. Yeah, it's saying too hot. And so it was kind of just a joke about how the dad writes probably mad at all these people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, like... it's, a play, it's a play on a fucking car. But the Stephen King car one. I didn't even pick yeah. that up until Straight you up. just said that. That's hella smart. So now it says it starts telling you, it starts telling you about seven hundred degrees, and so I try not to really let it sit over until then because it's it's just a little piece of silicone protecting it. And yeah. yeah. The banger is about twelve hundred <laughs> degrees when you're done heating it. How hot? About twelve hundred degrees. 
Stay we got strong. a song called 1200 Degrees. 1200 Degrees. Uh, it's kind of about that. So, you guys are low temp dabbers then? Of course. I mean, some would say yes, some would say no. It's kind of a... Yeah. I'm going to try and give you a good low temp, but it might be hot. I've, I've been told like 530 is my Give time. him a hot one. <laughs> well, I got them baby lungs. Uh, spicy. <laughs> I, I will. I will hang out with the hot, hot dabs guys, but I will not hang. I, uh, I tell you that right now. Yeah, I take average. I mean, if I'm taking a fat dab, I'm taking a .5. I'm taking it hot. You know, I'm going in a little hotter, but an average nice size dab, I'm going low temp for sure. <laughs> the casino just went in at about he 400. Did. I mean, 515 degrees. <coughs> we got a good melt, and he seems to be enjoying himself. That white thorn rose. Good lord. Mm, the terps are hitting. <coughs> the look on his face says it was a success. <laughs> it's so good. Man. Shout out Punch Extracts. Don't, don't take this cough as a bad thing. It is literally clearing me out, and I feel better than You got a cough to get off, man. Come on. Yeah. That's the thing in the rosin community, brother. It's like... When I first started dabbing, my OG told me that, man. I'm coughing like a motherfucker. He's like, you got to cough to get up. If I still got shit in that, feel free. Yo, this guy's got lighter buddies attached to the table. Everywhere. Anywhere you need, there's a lighter. Straight <coughs> up. You know why? I noticed that. You know why? Because people kept walking away with my fucking lighter. <laughs> so I'm like, you know what? That's all you get now. <laughs> it's official, though. I it like it. It's a nice touch. <laughs> No, that shit's hella um, funny. Feel free. Please dab this up. I got yeah, it for us it to on enjoy. on this side of the table. This one. I'll try one of these for sure. Hell yeah. Yeah, tell me twice. Fuck yeah. That shit is so good. The flour, the rosin, all across the board. Remember the old weed soda they used to have in 215 days? What's the flavor oh, on that? Oh, man. Oh, it smells good. It is. Black cherry lemonade. Or lemonade? Ooh. Lemonade? It's a soda? <laughs> uh, lemonade. Okay. No, that's bar. Yeah. That's good. That's, that's some a, tasty. That's some fire Shout boys. Shout out Don Primo. <laughs> you know what I mean? Some fire boys. Don Primo, you, you dropping some fire, man. Mm. That was tasty. I can see you saying over some ice, man. man. Put that bitch into like a smoothie or something, a little slushy. Hell yeah. Jeez. Callie loves a slushy, let me Ooh, tell you. And the water boys love they lemonade. We went to man. Boston. They got these lime drinky things. Mm. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, Everywhere we went, Boston, there was some crazy frozen lime drink, bro. You couldn't believe it. Limeade was crazy. Mm. Fuguru chow. Mm. Like was... You ever had a gin fizz? Gin fizz. Ooh, what are you talking so about, good. player? That sounds sick. <laughs> it's that a uh, sick. It's it's a it's a cocktail, mm. and you put egg white in it. I, if, oh. I'm, if I'm remembering correctly, and you okay. shake it, and it like You're meringues. Losing You're losing it, me. You're losing me. I'm right there with you because oh. I the first time I heard this, I was like, what? Right, but you, but how many times you had meringue? And that shit's fire. Yeah, for and sure. And that's just raw egg yolk yeah. or egg whites. Uh, <laughs> so you shake it with some gin and what's with some other shit? I don't know. It's fire. It's got some lime juice. It's, it's like it's blessed. like almost like a slushy lime cocktail. I like that. fire. I like it's like a creamy lime. Mm. Um, creamy lime. Callie, what's up? What's up? What about your first time on stage? So I've been making music ten plus years now, man. I fucking really been doing this shit. And my first performance ever was at an event in Mountain House called Cali Festo. Shouts out to my boy, man. Straight Cali Festo, bro. Shouts out to fucking Play K, man. He was putting them shows on back in the day. That's my dog. And I went up on that fucking show. I did my set. And that was the first stage I ever rocked. I paid, yeah, straight up. D-Lo was oh, there, bro, yeah. too. Bro, bro, Mama was there, too. Mama, no. the forwards, bro. Uh, nah. Mama was in the building. <laughs> bro, so that's what's crazy is I paid to get on that show. I did my performance. Didn't perform for that many people. And at the end is when I linked up with Rappin' Forte. And that's linking up with Rappin' Forte that day. I went on tour with him the next day. And the next day, he's like, bro, I want you to come with me. Did four or five dates, and then they ended up signing me to the label. That was literally... My Tell him what came of that, though. Tell him about the tour out. you went on. Oh, bro, we was on tour nonstop. I went on tour with G-Eazy, man. We performed with fucking E-40. 20,000, 30,000 people. That's Straight crazy. up. That's we was crazy. really doing shit for the Bay. We was going everywhere with that shit. One Thanksgiving, a couple days before, me and Snoop Dogg handed out hella turkeys in Inglewood. You smoke with Snoop? Fuck yeah. All right, well, that's that's a good lead into <laughs> To my a question, the last question I had on the list, <laughs> who's the coolest person you ever smoked with? Fuck. That's, oh, it's definitely to the top, bro. That's definitely. I, and that's on everybody's. The best. I mean, it, 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 no, you know, it literally, like, I'm trying to think, like. That's the dog father. Like, oh, 
I don't think there was anybody else yeah. that I smoked with that was doper than Snoop. I mean, Straight like, up. you could like, say, like, it's tight to smoke with other people, but that's, like, a bucket list type shit. Nah, it was an honor, bro. Straight up, I was like, oh, <coughs> smoke some fire, too. We had so much Once? rolled up, bro. Once? Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. All this shit rolled up. I was like, man. Hell yeah. I okay. asked him too. I was like, "What's up, this fucking old boy Rodis? The nah, fucking I he's know. got a roller, bro. He's got a roller paying like eighty. No, he used to year. have what's his name roll his shit. Uh, man, I mm-hmm. forgot his name. He was a comedian. Cat Williams. Nah. Bishop Don Juan. Nah. I met Bishop Don Juan through the mix too. That motherfucker <laughs> Kilo G, bro. That's he was cool as fuck. Oh, uh, I don't know who was rolling this. So ah, fuck, I forgot. He was a famous comedian. <laughs> shit slip my mind. Man. But a lot of shit be slipping Cali's sh- mind. Like, hey. Hey, when you smoke as much hash as me, hell yes. yeah. It happens. Speaking of which, I need to get up on that hash hat game, bro. I see that everywhere, <laughs> bro, and I'm like, that's hot. That's Dude, how I gotta get me one of those. Straight up with Turp Wars two, we're dropping a whole new colorway, man. I'm a hat guy, it's, you know. Hey, I got I hats see everywhere. You, that bro. thing, that's an old PG and E hard hat, bro. I was noticing that, bro. Ain't I was like, sick? what the fuck? That's that, tight. I got that and that from a, a old estate sale, bro. That guy bro. just had him chilling in his garage. I was like, big casino, be like, man, I'm getting all the deals. Hell yeah, straight that up. shit. I ain't never seen a safari hat like that, dude. I really was like, what? That's a PG and E hat. I want to. Australia or something? Right? I Crikey. work with PG&E all the time. I want to just wear that on a walk one day. Just be like, yeah, what's up, guys? Like, just totally normal. They said, what is this? <laughs> this cannot be up to code. Bro. <laughs> Chad. <clears throat> right after you take a rip. Mm. Coolest person you've smoked with. And you can't say Lieutenant Cal. I was just going to say you, Lieutenant Cal. You cannot <laughs> say it. Oh, uh, I smoked with a couple of different hash legends. You know, I'm fucking smoking with my homie Bobby Trill, mm-hmm. smoking with Adi Hash. You know, these mm-hmm. these are people I don't even think I'd be here without just because they inspired the culture so much, made made oh, weed God. so much more than just weed. Yeah, because we, you know, it used to be like something for degenerates or whatever, but now right. you can't really make that argument. We're out here <laughs> isolating flavors. There's housewives smoking hash. You know, I know people that can tell you where the weed was grown, just like someone can tell you where the wine was grown. What, you know, what part of the world, uh, what the soil was like. Which is how I like my weed. Uh. <laughs> like, honestly, I've never had an indoor that stood up to the best outdoor, you know? Bro. Like, you can have good indoor. You can, yeah, but, but the sun hits it different. There's you know some about, it's mama's Facts. cooking. You're going to get different turps off that real sunlight, bro. Ma- it's just the real truth. Mama Facts. nature, that's her That's her cookies, you know what I mean? Yeah, mm. yeah. you know, meth heads. Crackheads, they don't tell you these types of things about the nah. vices they have. So nah. this is just, you know, something a little classier. And yeah. I think good. that uh, some of the original <laughs> Hash guys kind of really opened it up for that. I feel like ever since Hash hit the scene, the whole weed market has just blossomed and exploded into something I don't think anybody imagined it becoming. What's your favorite kind of Hash? Hash rosin. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Hands down. Yeah. Cold cure. Mm. Cold cure. Cold Cure. I'm a big Cold Cure fan. Shout out West Coast Alchemy. Yeah. Uh, we'll go with Chad first. Your favorite rosin right now and your all-time favorite? Mm. Probably Skittles and Skittles. I mean, oh, it's just going to double oh. down on the Skittles there. You okay. double Skittles? I'm always down for a jar. You're Skittles, goading bro. Skittles? You're goading Personally, Skittles? Personally, yeah. Okay, okay. okay. I know. Yeah, Everybody's I mean, hot on it. It's that candy gas. I mean, I've been smoking it for 10 years now, and it, it ain't got old to me. Yeah. I think uh, it's one of those strains that a lot of people don't make it right or hit it right, mm-hmm. but people are so fiending for that flavor that a lot of bad Skittles gets passed around. But some good Skittles? Yeah. What's really smoking better than that? Maybe some Zushi. Mm. Who did I get it from? Oh, it was from my boy Good Pizza. <laughs> good Pizza gave me some straight, real Skittles yep. from his boy... You gotta tune into the show to hear who it's from. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, that shit. You're right. I mean, there's nothing. You you can have Skittles and then you can have Z. You know, and you can have Za. There's there's different layers to the game, right? Of course. What about you, Callie? So it was all time favorite and then current favorite. Current favorite, then all time. And and Skittles is out now. Yeah, no. Nah. Can't be chosen. I like Skittles, but not that much. Cali ain't really a connoisseur like that. Man, you're <laughs> oh, shots fired, bro. Shots fired. 
I'd say currently some of the most fucking tasty shit I've smoked. It's got to be some of that spritzer. Ooh. I like the spritzer a lot. Out of, uh, where's that from? A lot of people are doing okay. it. A lot of people are doing it. I don't think I've seen that. I think that's a compound strain. Oh, spritzer? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it very right. well could be for sure. sure. It's not, yeah. It's not I as, believe it was bred by Canarado. Canarado. It's great pie times uh, Mac times white oh, rice. Mm, mm. Bro, it's flavorful. My old school, my all time OG, triple OG, can smoke it till the day I die. Some GMO, man. Okay. I'm you a like GMO, that GMO, You did not just say that. I'm you sick, like some GMO? I'm a sick fuck. You are a sick fuck. You're making, us, you're making the water boys look good. <laughs> <laughs> I like GMO, man. I like man. the fuck. I'm going to. Rotten, nasty. Mm. I'm the guy who made who ruined GMO for everybody. Well, I know a bunch of dudes that made a lot of money. I'm bringing it GMO back. No. Because of me. <laughs> First and foremost, this is a safe place, Kali. And you can. <laughs> so you can smoke all the GMO you, you want. Can feel, no, no, no. You can't smoke GMO here, but you can feel free. <laughs> You can feel free to tell your truth. <laughs> um, I oh. I do like GMO because it, it has a really oh. interesting terpene profile in which when you cross it's the garlic, it, bro. I'm but, a but fat boy. it's a great you know cross. Like, it's a great but it's crosser. it's weird because sometimes that GMO doesn't come through at all, and it fucking it's gotta boosts be some up, good GMO. It boosts you know up that candy. Like, is mm-hmm. it, but the, but the GMO yeah. comes through more on like the bud build side. Yeah. yeah. But then sometimes you get all that funk. Uh-huh. And it, and it's like you could cross it with some grape and shit, and you yep. don't get any yeah. grape. You get nothing but funk, and you're like, what the fuck? Straight and then, up. And then you cross it, and you pheno hunt it, and then you get no GMO in it. But that motherfucker is built. Yeah, yeah. that's what you're looking for. Yeah, I, I love GMO, but not for the flavor profile. <laughs> no, really. not not for the flavor profile. For the genetics. That's your goat GMO. He's Damn. got problems. He's a He's, sick he fuck. likes liver and onions type guy, bro. Cali will eat anything. Nasty, bro. It tastes Gotta like a dirty sock. Out. Yeah. It should Crazy taste girl, fucking just mm. rancid. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> so, but like, you know what I'm saying? It's so <laughs> gas and so hit. Like, you, you into cheeses? <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. I used to smoke hella UK cheese back in the day. I used bro, to pack and pack. That's and this right here. Bro. This blue unicorn out mm. of Sanctuary Farm. Blue unicorn? Some blue unicorn. Let's bro. roll it. It smells crazy. No, hey, for sure. Roll Let's it up. Roll it up. Um, the blue unicorn won the 2023 Emerald Cup for highest terpene profile oh, across bro. the board. Hell. Which... We got Mabo Rabo rolling joints. Sure. Hey, real talk. I've never seen him roll one up, but this is like a do or die Mabo. I just rolled the last one. You yeah, rolled that? Yeah, hell yeah. Hey, real talk. Yeah. That, I thought that's going in. So well done, sir. Well done. Well done. He going in. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, dog, roll. Yeah, roll oh, up some of that blue unicorn. Um, big shout out to Elisa and and Zhu for putting that together. Um, Zhu. I mean, Zhu. honestly, he's. I believe he's out of Brazil. Dope name. They, hey, hey, real talk. What you know about? Yeah, it's all sun grown living soil. Fire. It's it's straight fire. They do capoeira. You guys know capoeira? That's like the, the dance, dance fighting. fighting. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's how they met. It was like, no way. You gotta go back and listen to the Sanctuary Farms episode, mm. bro. She goes into it, and I'm just like, I wonder if it's you so mean. romantic and deadly. Yeah, I was gonna mm. wonder if like turns into fuck fighting. Right. Like, Look, look I am not gonna comment on fighting. that because she is a good friend of mine. Oh. Um, and so is you, by the way. So you know, I'm not. I gonna... meant no disrespect. But yeah, they they met doing capoeira, and I don't think the. Um, the fire has died yet. They're they're doing some great flower. Actually, some of my favorite flower of the year was their mac, a uh, lemon mac. Ooh. I saved the jar after it was done because it smells so fucking good. What's that? Lemon pound cake. They got some. This Tahiti lime is fucking fire. Some gas. Yeah. Um, fire. Yeah. Check check out all the like the flavors mac. they got. Mac some fire. That purple chewy right there. That shit's some fire too. Smells like some purple punch type cross. So, um, again, big shout out to Sanctuary Farms. Introducing Emerald Spirit Botanicals, a family-owned farm that's changing the world of cannabis. Their carefully nurtured, sustainable farming practices ensure that every bud is bursting with natural flavors and aromas that wake up all of your senses. At Emerald Spirit Botanicals, they believe in the power of nature. The small but passionate mother and son's team has dedicated their lives to cultivating the most loved cannabis plants. Their exceptional strain, Pink Boost Goddess, has been recognized by many prestigious competitions winning top awards at the 2021, 2022, and 2023 Emerald Cup, as well as the unique gold award at the 2022 and 2023 California State Fair. Visit their website, emeraldspiritbotanicals.com, to discover where you can find the award-winning strain, Pink Boost Goddess. Emerald Spirit Botanicals, nature's finest in every bud. This ad made possible by the contributions from our friends at thehighestcritic.com. Make sure to swing by thehighestcritic.com 
for articles and information about today's trending cannabis topics. Make sure to check out thehighestcritic.com and follow them on Instagram at thehighestcritic. What's your favorite place to perform? Hmm. Place I've ever performed or to perform? Like, are we talking like yeah, a venue let's, or let's city? Do, let's do both. Yeah. Where, where's the, like, the best venue? That you've ever performed, your favorite, and then like where where do you like to go? So the probably craziest venue I ever performed was the Forum in Los Angeles. That was with on the G Easy tour. That was a, a crazy big, huge performance. But I say my favorite place to perform, I've performed there countless times. It's right here in Sacramento, man, at Ace of Spades. Okay. Oh. So I've done hundreds of shows there, man, through hella companies, hella different people, man. Never invites me, man. <laughs> So much, and it's just like when they pack it out. I've sold out shows there. When they pack it out, the crowd's right. Sac yep. knows the vibe, baby. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I've been really to a bunch like, of shows there. It's a dope thing. No. Yeah, straight. Up. I performed yeah. there with I Am Sue, Neff the Pharaoh, for everybody who's everybody. We was there performing, bro. How big of a room up. is it? It holds like 1,500 people, 1,000 people. Does it really? Yeah, I'd say 1,000 people sold out. Yeah. It gets, you know, you get a thick thing. It's a lot of standing room. I've seen Jeezy there. the second uh, there. back of, yeah. I've seen Absol there. A little balcony. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Stingy. Bro. Solid. Yeah. I did a show with Swayze. Swayze, you remember him? Corona uh, and Lime. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. So a, a group, a hip-hop group that I knew I played drums for, we opened for them down in Santa Cruz. And I can't remember the venue name to save my life. So you be drumming, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I've been playing shit. the drums my whole life. What? Uh, that's fine. I, I was into some hip-hop drums just to kind of do something live because, like, that's the easiest way to get out So what's there. up? If the Water Boys Let's need a live drummer Let's for a performance, you in? You want. Oh, my man. Anytime if you I want. I need air. Bro. I'll send you my invoice. Hell yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, like, Smart. I, I love music, and that's actually why I'm kind of drawn to the Water Boys, because, like, first and foremost, music can change my mood. There's some Hell people, yeah. I didn't know this, people can listen to music and not get goosebumps. I know, but uh, there's some people do. Me it's, and you probably are both. I, I fucking, I'm not too proud to say, like, I weep. Driving. I believe it's a sign of emotional intelligence. For sure, hundred percent. And if it's not, well, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, there's certain songs where it's just like it resonates, you know. And whether it's funny, or whether it's you know really heartfelt, or like Whitney Houston or fucking G Easy, like there's yeah. there's something that every artist can put out there that that can touch somebody. And I've always said like it only takes one set of ears to change your life. And right if you're liking something, every there's a ton of people who are fucking with you, what you're doing. Wow. You just don't know it yet. So I, I love fucking seeing musicians get out there, and I like characters too, which is obviously like what the Water Boys is. It's kind of a Hell yeah. a fun a fun mask to wear. But behind it, there's artists, right? Like yeah. you're you're a musician. Like clearly, oh. you have a mind that's more of like a, a business oriented, but still artistic in a way. You know, not not uh, set in a box. And then Brad is obviously the, like you said, you guys all have different strengths. He's the animator. He's kind of the guy behind it. So, um, And he's huge on the music, too, because, no, uh, like I said, he toured he's, around the world. That's he's crazy. been making music my whole life. Yeah. When I met him, he was in a band. What like, kind of music did he play? Metal. metal. That's, so that's what I was yeah. into. I play like Avenged Sevenfold. Which is like. I play all that kind of shit. Anybody that can play metal can basically play anything. Yeah. Everything's a step down from metal. Exactly. <laughs> you got that double bass, bro. It's yeah. just like, oh, this is easy. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's, it's awesome Straight having up. him on the team, you know. He yeah. mixed and masters a lot of stuff. We, we we got a couple of friends in the music industry that have done some mixing and mastering for us. Brad's my spiritual advisor. Who's that? Brad, Brad is. Yeah, I love that. Straight up. Mine too. <laughs> what what makes him so good as a spiritual advisor? He's one. Yeah. He's a holy one. He That's knows awesome. he knows his place in the universe straight up. He don't yeah, he's not he don't have any insecurities about no. who he is, what he brings to the table, why he should be anywhere he's at because, you know. And yeah, that feeds into his work ethic insanely. He's just man. Incredible. He's, he's a uh an old soul kind of guy. We all are. For sure. Yeah. You talk to him at the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we, I talked to him for quite a bit. The craziest of... thing is me, Chad, and Brad all have the same legal name. That's so funny. This is true. You know what I'm saying? It's, That's it's, how it works, bro. There's a lot of spiritual <laughs> connections going on. Really? Yeah. No, it is. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> hey, same spelling and everything. Same uh, first hey. initial to our middle name yeah. as well. Yeah, all our middle names start with the same letter, too. TSA loves us. Ah, they so oh. Oh. oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. No, they say by the third one, they're like, wait a minute. Let me check all y'all bags. 
This is, this is, y'all got some IDs? You guys have to like separate in line. Just so <laughs> if we don't, they really look at us. They're I like, bet. man, okay. And y'all wearing those hash hats through security. And We're generally like, matching too. So it's, uh, <laughs> they're like, wow, these guys are really special. Hey, you know what would be hella funny though? If you guys all showed up like five minutes separate and then stood in line and you were just like, Yo, what's up, bro? I like your shirt. <laughs> and you're like in line. People are like, wait, what the fuck? They're all wearing the same thing. That's crazy. That's that would be great. Uh, but yeah, oh. I mean, I, I love teams too. Yeah. I, but like I coach. Oh, no shit. Yeah, yeah. That's tight. And like I've always been like a leader in a sense of like a team builder, not so much like. Game. Yeah, that's how I feel about it too. There, man. There's it's different kinds of leaders. You yeah. know, there, there's the kinds who are, who are alphas, which I don't fuck with because like I'm the kind of guy who will work with the group. I'm not too big to be like, I fucked up. Let's fix this. Let's get it together. For and sure. there's some guys who are too proud to do that. Everyone fucks up. That's yeah. the thing. You don't realize that? You ain't. That don't mean you're a beta either. No, no but, but I feel like a lot of times there's like those, those really strong personalities who are just like, I can't fucking be wrong in this moment. Yeah. And I don't fuck with those kinds of people because it never comes out on top for anybody. But if them. you can't lay your ego aside, you'll never get nowhere. Yeah. Straight up. And honestly, if you can't probably... be humble, there ain't no point to it. You know what I'm saying? Like... I, I, I do think that it's important to have a guy like that that you look up to and is a peer. Not necessarily a, a fucking supervisor or some yeah. shit, but somebody who's on the even keel who can teach you some shit. Oh, when me and B get on the phone, we'll just fucking four or five hour phone call. Yeah. We're here we're on the phone. We're we all it. teach each other stuff. That's what I'm saying. Like, in yeah. so many ways, it's crazy. Yeah. We all bring a different view and aspect of life. We've all experienced successes in different ways something will get one of us upset and sometimes the other two will be like nah you know you know or yeah. vice versa two will be upset yeah. you step in like, what are you guys talking about and it really does feel like a team you know yeah. but that's why you need three too like because if it was one v one then it's a lot more like this and who's stronger but when you have three it's like two guys can be like well you know like what if we did it different yeah. and then that one can be like okay i'm more willing to compromise i think the three legs of the stool is much stronger than the two straight up and then just us you know i mean we work, everybody we work with is solid. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We've really honed in on just fucking with our people that we fuck with that are really doing shit. Yeah. And that's where, you know. And if they've been on a Waterboy song, they're a Waterboy. You yeah, know yeah. what I'm saying? So Bob is a Waterboy. Yeah, 100% Amazed. going through. Like, it's a movement. Easy. It's a fucking whole unit. Like, Absolutely. I this love new, that shit, This is a new wave. This is a lifestyle. You already know, baby. Uh, any cool collabs that are in the works that, that we haven't talked about yet? Ooh. This is some hot shit. Drop it right now. Weed Between the Wines <laughs> exclusive. We talking music or are we talking? I mean, there's a lot of collabs. I mean, that's true, too. I mean, you got the fucking heady swabs, oh, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Of course. You got the fucking cork uh, mats. I don't know if that's like a, a collab. That was a dab fish collab. A guy yeah. That's dab tight. Fish, yeah. You got uh, the fucking yeah. uh, dab right. Yup. What else oh, we yeah. got, brother? Coming soon, there is going to be some Water Boys Toros. Okay. That's going to be oh, yeah, Turf Slurpers, Water Boys, me? Turf Wars. So that's that's quartz kind of stuff, glass. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Nice. For the, your, the top for of bangers. the line, the number one dude. And See, I'm not in the rosin side, so I don't get that. Like, yeah, when it, it. when it comes to bangers, Toros been at the He top. invented this. Yeah, he literally style invented of banger. The oh, turf okay. And, oh, that's shit. and I believe when he invented the Turf Slurper, he really uh, he changed the marketplace. There's a few Forever. things that have happened that really boosted rosin sales. The Puff Co. It's mm-hmm. one of them. Yep. Yes. Hash holes is yes. one of them. And the tarp slurper is one of them. With these things, you know, it really allowed the consumer on all levels to enjoy the product. Of, you know, the Puffco made it easy for people to don't dab. Before that dabbing. turp slurper, yeah. you couldn't get as high taking a dab out of a bucket. That was going to be my question. What is the difference? It's so... I have a it's a debatable. <laughs> my theory Mama, is... you can have your own fucking episode, bro. <laughs> this my, guy. my theory is, is that the, uh, when you cap it, there's only one point of entry for flow, right? It's through the bottom. Yep. And it goes through the bottom. How many holes are in the bottom? Three, I believe. Okay. Uh, different slurpers. Yeah, have different, they have different size yeah. holes. Different. Yeah, yeah. But this general design allows the air to go in the bottom, up, and through right to your lungs, right? So with the traditional banger, you have a carb cap, mm-hmm. and the air kind of tumbles around. And it hits the carb cap and then goes it in. It, like, bounces around the whole banger a bunch and goes yeah. down. I see. And then so, that heat creates, like, the constant... Uh, vertical movement mm-hmm. instead of bouncing. and what it is too is with a bucket you're capping in you have to let air in yeah. for it to move yeah, around yeah. air oxidizes turps this turp slurper is a vacuum chamber it's a 360 vacuum chamber so the turps equally hit the walls yeah. as it goes up and equally you know more surface area of heat more dabs getting less vaporized. oxygen less oxygen more turps, more turps. no offense Straight I up. think that's 
the stronger answer <laughs> of the two. That makes a lot more sense to my mind. Is yeah. that it's, like it's a vacuum? It, it doesn't allow truth. any Not outside you air. It's take all coming in. Fat dabs and good dabs off of buckets. Like there are some great buckets out there, mm -hmm. you know. But when it comes down to the science of it, because this is this is a terp slurper, then there's a control tower. Control tower looks kind of similar, but it has this kind of bottom with just a straight tube. Now that's doing the same thing. It's a vacuum chamber. Wait, so it has it has a what? So it's longer. It's a longer mm -hmm. tube. Yeah, yeah, I've seen with that. With the bottom on it. Yeah, super you, long. You definitely, yeah, yeah, you've definitely they seen They have it. like crazy ones too. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Black Market Glass be making some wild ones. We're about to hit some soon. It's going to be crazy. But yeah, so it's the same thing. Vacuum chamber. Okay. The terps are, you know, more surface area to heat up, more quartz getting heated, more vat, you know, it's spinning. That's what the holes do. They let the right amount of air in cuz the, the thing about the carb cap on top doesn't have airflow. You're creating that suction. You're creating that pull. That makes yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And, and it's again, still science, mean, you know what I'm saying? As somebody who is not, the lid went. as someone who's not at all involved in rosin, and yeah. I, I have one of those little buckets, yeah, and I haven't <laughs> used it in over a year. You know, yeah. I like flour, but like I respect people who can talk and who can teach about rosin oh. and and the the items. That I you love use teaching to enjoy. people too because there's you know I feel a better way to smoke always. You know what I'm saying? Like they're keep inventing stuff that's just making it more cleaner. <laughs> And more, yeah. you know, better to smoke off of. And the people that don't know, the people using Chaz bangers, the people that aren't temping their dabs and burning their lungs. I mean, I started there. Don't get me wrong. I used to take fucking half gram dabs, full gram dabs off the e-nail and a worm, a shatter, burn Ugh. my lungs. You know what I'm saying? But now that I know, I, that's my whole goal is to teach people. That's what yeah. we, you know, we try to educate and elevate. That's what the music's about too, yeah. you know. It's a lot of education yeah. in it too. That's a great point because it, it's it makes learning... Like, if you didn't know... You don't even know you're learning when you're watching it, because it's funny. We're talking about dabbing at the right temperatures, you know, just trying to really... We believe consumer education is the main reason that uh, people probably have adverse There's ideas There's a lot of negative dabbing. ideas, yeah. Yeah, like, one, like, it looks like you might be smoking, you know, something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another one yeah. is, is people Whenever taking you bring a hot torch dabs. Out, it kind of gets... Uh, the Puffco bridges the gap here. Same temperature every time. One, well, I mean, it, like, like you said, it's very approachable for, like, the the wine mom to now do dabs with the doc or with the uh with the puff go yeah oh of course yeah the puff goes really making it household and it seems cleaner right like because for example my grandma she smoked weed her whole life but towards the end like you can't really smoke that much like no. it, it fucks up your lungs and my mom well, eats edibles you know yeah. what I'm she can't smoke well of so course it's like but like i see a lot of older people going to vapes too and going to dabs because yeah. it's, it's a different experience but they only need to take a little and they're done the rest of the day. And the cool part about the Puffco is it's ceramic. So we're smoking off quartz. You smoke off the ceramic, it holds heat better. So that's why the Puffco really gotcha. be hitting for people. You know, you could, with the, uh, the 3XL chamber, you could really take good sized dabs now. That yeah. was like the problem in the beginning. But like they really are opening it up for the community because it is making it, you know, less. When you bring a torch out, people start looking at you weird. I be smoking with my TSV. So my TSV heats up my nail with heat. And it's like an induction heating device. So I try to use that as much as possible without, you know, using my torch. Because I use a lot of butane, too. It really definitely will be holding me back. And then it just looks, you know, it kind of looks cooler. I feel like when I bring my TSV out, people, for example, we was at the Lumpy's event. And these two, you know, mature ladies came up and they're like, what, what are you doing? Oh, I was like, I'm smoking hash. And you say sous vide, and they're like, oh, I have one of those. Hey, they, it's they, also they, like a great campfire. You could heat your hands up real nice with it. Oh, it was cold at that event. Oh, yeah, I swear yeah, yeah. we were staying warm off that thing, man. <laughs> but, yeah, really just, you know, just teaching the people what's up. Like, if you didn't know to not keep your thing, uh, your nail over your dab right when it's too hot, who's going to tell you that? You know what I'm saying? We out here really just trying to educate and trying to fucking just expand People been dabbing way too hot. Oh yeah, for years. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Well, now, included. Can you, know, you explain what the different temperatures like really do to it? Like, why why does a hotter temp? Uh, let me let me rephrase that. Why are higher temp dabs less popular? They're just less flavor, and they're gonna make you cough more. So, if you're not a real dabber, that's gonna be an extreme experience. Straight up, you're it's... coughing a lung up. It don't taste good that way. You go low temp. You might, if you get the right temp, you might cough once or twice. Nice little cough. Yeah. You'll have all these flavors you've never tasted in weed before. You know, some of them taste like orange soda and sh shit. Crazy, crazy flavors, man. Coat your mouth. 
You don't want to burn it. You want to yeah. vaporize it. Exactly. <laughs> you, don't, you don't want to inhale carcinogens because then you're just smoking cancer. You're not smoking medicine at that point. So you want to vaporize the terpenes and the, and the hash so you can get that perfect experience. And that only happens at a certain temperature. It's, if you go hotter than that, it, you it can bust. Yeah, exactly. straight up. Some people do love a hot dab, though, more than anything else. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, it will get you higher. Yeah. Like, you're, it's going to burn it, and it's, I mean, well, it's going to feel like it's getting you higher. <laughs> a perfect, nothing gets you higher than a perfect temp. No, straight up. It's like when you really take it at the proper temperature and taste what you're smoking. It's like God's light shining down on there's you. There's nothing better. The clouds open up. You know what I'm saying? There's like, beautiful music. For you. <laughs> it's like, it's like Fergie and Jesus. Nothing better. Straight That's a great up. point. It does something different than when the hot one. Yeah. Straight hot up. It just hurts you. Yeah. With no flavor. You know what I'm saying? It burns your throat. Yeah. It's so hot it feels like it's ice cold. You know, that kind of like painful. Mm -hmm. I, bro, we used to have a homie. We called him Iron Lungs. And we used to give him red hot, after red hot after red hot after red hot. He's dead now. No, he's not. No, R.I.P. Iron Lungs. <laughs> His lungs are dead. That's for sure. But he is living and breathing. For my own sake, <clears throat> go deep into the flower right now. Let's do it. I got some high tokies. You guys know about this? You was okay. I think I hit this at hash hole. The laser bong. Yes, okay. yes. Tell me about it. The though. laser bong. Fucking, I'm trying to hit it. So what? it has a ceramic. We were just. That's what reminded me. It has a ceramic bowl in it. This and this are both the same technology. Yeah. Saber and Trident. They're both from Hitoki. Mm. That's the laser. It yeah. goes down. It it com it does combust. So it's not a vaporizer like I initially thought. It yeah. is a combustion. But it's cleaner uh, than a lighter. It. You 100%. can taste everything. Yeah. Everything. <laughs> And so, so dope. you put the you put, you <laughs> grind it up in the flour mill, put it into the ceramic bowl. Mm. You stick it down in there. You laser it, and it it combusts at a very high temperature on that ceramic bowl, and you get a lot more terp flavor out of it than if you're using like butane in a bomb. Yeah. Can we talk about flour mill? Hell yeah, let's talk. about oh, You got one right there, on your little roll. Oh no, you passed it over here. Here you go. Yar. This is a little mini. I love the Wolverine blue. Mm -hmm. That's that's my boy Wolverine. So I got. I've been it. seeing these things everywhere. Bro. Everywhere. Check this out too. This is the premium. Let me see this one. It's got interchangeable interchangeable plates so that you can mill at different sizes, which is really great for like I've never seen this shit before. Rolls. You ain't seen it? That's because Callie's like I said, he's not really like that. He's not I a mean I smoke more like flour than Chad for sure. Yeah, yeah but, but he's not a connoisseur like that. I don't grind my you know, I smoke backwards. I'm sorry. Mm, I do oh, hell, hey, hey, hey. And I this don't will do it different thickness. You'd that love you love uh, Lucy grind. Hashko then because he, that's all he smokes is woods. He wouldn't even smoke that's so funny. He wouldn't even smoke a brother's broadleaf with me. And that shit's like, the only no, 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 time? it was a pearl. It was a Paxton Ooh. pearl. He wouldn't smoke it with me. He's like, I only do I'll woods, smoke bro. different blunts for sure. But yeah. woods, I mean, I'd have the tattoo. It's my yeah. heart. Like, I grew up smoking pack after pack of just fire. And my favorite way to smoke it was in the back. And you, you should only make let 20 everybody bucks. know you regret that tattoo. And you only make 20 I mean, bucks a month. I a little bit, but you only made 20 bucks a month. <laughs> From that tattoo. Every time he shows, it's another I smoke less blunts now mail. for health reasons, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. I realized, like, I mean, I was smoking. <laughs> 15, 16 backwards a day with multiple packs. You get that blunt on the box. Like, and it's just so I smoke less blunts now. But like, I really bust a grinder out if I'm rolling a hash hole. You know, yeah. you need the weed down finer. But this is crazy. I mean, I'm a Santa Cruz Shredder guy, but no. this is some new shit. No, I ain't you, seen this. You need to fuck with the. I'm telling you, like, so I used the Dang. Sharp Stones. I thought those were like better than the yeah, Shredders. I've seen, in I've my seen those too. And I broke like three teeth in it. Mm. Yeah, I broke hell that, Sharp Stones. I gave my I've boy. I've never seen this shit. This is, the mini man. is the same as the standard. Um, Where's Flower Mill out of? They're out of Michigan. Or actually, they're all over the place. They got a, they got people in Arizona. They got people in Canada. They got people in Michigan. My boy Brent, he's he's a personal friend of mine. Um, he's a co-founder of the company, and he's out of Michigan. Man. Um, I'll definitely have to get you guys linked up with him. I know they do, like, special. Tell, tell Brent I need one of these. I want to try uh, it out, no, man. absolutely. Most I, definitely. I, next time I see you guys, I'll have one for you. Fuck um, yeah, bro. We'll talk to Brent. He listens to every episode when he's traveling. Shout out days. to Brent. Hell yeah, know. man. Honestly, like, I, I say have, this. I've I, been hearing it everywhere. I say this every single episode, and I don't have, they don't pay me any money. Like, I love the flour mill personally. I always will because of the technology. And <laughs> Brent is a fucking good dude. Like, there's certain people in life that you're like, I fuck with them no matter what. Even yeah. if his products suck, I'd still have it on the show because he's such a good dude, and that's what Brent is. He, he was on our show right before Hashel Island. That's so fire. And good product, good people. And, and he supports the community 
so hard. <laughs> you know, he's got Bruno and uh, Grasshopper working with him on Lux roles. Uh-huh. Actually, Shout he's working with he's working with them because like Shout they Bruno. built it. Yeah, yeah, Bruno. Bruno's the boy. He was on like my third quick sesh. Like, I knew that when I saw him wearing that tux with the bow tie, I was like, this guy's about his business. Yeah, hell you yeah. You know, and, and I like professionals. I like characters, like I said. You know, oh, yeah. Big he, Casino's a he character. He down, too. Big Casino ain't, ain't who I am to my core. It's just a fun a fun person to be in the community, right? Just we like the water you. boys. Straight up, man. Some days, I'm not sure who I am anymore. <laughs> I'm well, a full-time water boy. It's He's funny because full-time. you guys were talking about, you know, your boy and how he's very comfortable with who he is. And, and Callie, you were talking in your interview about how when you were younger, and I res- it resonated with me, you know, getting made fun of for your weight and being overweight and being, you know, the fat kid and shit. And, Straight like, I, I was in a big high school, and so I was, like, the smallest fat kid. Mm. So there was no benefit to being a fat kid at that point. <laughs> like, I, my, my boys called me the Derek Jeter of fat kids because I yeah. played all kinds of sports, and I was, like, pretty good. But, like, this sounds like me. Everybody only cares about football in high school. And when you're the smallest fat kid, you don't get any playing time. You know what I mean? So it's like what you were saying resonated with me. But then also what you said was like you're cool with who you are. You grew to like understand who you are as a person. And like. I'm fucking me. Ain't nobody else me. I'm my own. You know what I'm saying? Like it's really like if you don't give a fuck what people think about you and you know that you solid, you know that you stay to your core and to your beliefs. That's how you stay humble. You know what it's I'm saying? honestly That's how you easy. Stay real. It's easier to live that way because you never have to worry about like, oh shit, what did I say to somebody? Like, yeah, you ain't never got to be fake. You don't have you to remember. remember lies. You, you ain't got to fucking yourself. straight up, bro. Hundred percent. And I, and I really yeah. fuck with that kind of shit because it's like real, recognize real, and it's so easy when you're real to recognize real. Exactly. Bro. But it and it's so easy to recognize fake too. And that's why we're fucking kicking it right now in this studio, smoking Yee! it down. I, I really appreciate you guys making the drive, even though you're local. You know. Born and raised, you know, not anymore. We all move away. We all we all take trips from our. I'm out of fly three zero, but it ain't nothing. Exactly. Bro. You invited us out. We here. Man. Tell me about 100%. Chico. How, how's the music scene out there? I know I've been there a couple weekends in my yeah. life. <laughs> uh, As is everybody. Shit. Hopefully. Last time I was in Chico, my hair was down to my shoulders, bro. Ooh, that must have been a good weekend. I was the the lacrosse team president and captain, and <laughs> I was just swinging through those Halloween parties, bro. Man. Chico is a vibe, bro. I got a lot of homies out there that I've linked up with making music, man. Shouts out my boy Apollo Snow, man. Hell yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's a cool community, bro. Um, a lot of college kids. And it's like being in a college town, you can really promote your music to college kids. And then they go home in six months. They go home in a year. Yeah. And their home is in New York. Their home is in Texas. Their home is in fucking Michigan. And they tell their auntie, their cousin, their brother, their sister, and their mother about like, you. Look at this shit. And then it's like... It's you really push, and that's something we're focusing on. We okay. going out there fucking with the boy, man, doing interviews. Hey, college kids smoke a lot of weed. Yeah, you know they what I'm do. Saying? So they smoke those mids, though, bro. Yeah, they that's don't the got... coldest part. Too. Like, that's <laughs> they... why they need to listen to the water boys. Straight up, they don't learn about the good shit till they get older. But man, uh, <laughs> no, but like for real, that's that's where it's at, right? That's where the growth is on the yeah. ground. Yeah, the, the roots start at ground level. <laughs> Straight up. So, uh, what what are you guys doing to get out into new markets? So currently, we're getting a lot of tapes and a lot of products ready, and we're gonna start shipping them out to college radio stations across okay. the nation. Okay. We just did a tour. Yeah, we just got off tour. Well, it's still technically going on. We got Hash Hole Day. We got Legends of Hash. I'm getting ready for next year. We went to all the coasts. We went nice. to Houston. Straight up. We went to New York. We went to Boston. I guess we didn't go to all of them. We still need to go to Miami. Yeah. We to almost Basel. did. We was trying to go to Basel. You can't make it? Nah, uh, it wasn't looking right. We got a lot of stuff lined up right deep. now. That's deep. Yeah. Next year for sure, though. If we went to Turt Basel, we'd have to just be on like a two-week straight run. Yeah. Yeah. That's tough, bro. Especially when you got other business. Mm-hmm. Bro. You want to smoke that? Yeah, yeah casino. Well, roll up this. Uh, here. Bro, which one? The maraschino cherry. Yeah, did sorry. you just roll up the blue unicorn? Yes, mm-hmm. Okay, cool, cool. We'll What's some of that tahiti, too? Well, oh, nice. That's why it was so fucking yeah. fruity. Yeah. I was like, this ain't just straight blue unicorn. <laughs> uh, so, a hey, big shout out to Mabo Rabo. Check him out on Spotify, on Instagram, all that Robo's shit. Rabo's rolls. Uh, he just rolled up a fatty with some blue unicorn and tahiti lime uh, out of Sanctuary Farms. And this shit is smoking. So, appreciate you, bro. Yes, sir. I've been fucking with Mabo for a quick minute. He didn't know it. But I, I knew I, I came in like I don't know Six months after meeting him And I was like Hey bro I like that song He's like what 
I was like, yeah, you told me last time you're Mabo Rabo. I checked you out. He's like, oh, bro, I appreciate that. I was like, you didn't even yeah. fucking remember, doc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I always, like, if somebody's like, I do music, I check it out, you know? I got a story about Mabo. Let's hear it. I've been listening to Mabo for years. He's been performing at Sessions since Sessions started. <coughs> you told me this yesterday. He low-key inspired me. <coughs> you know, he inspired this whole movement in a lot of ways. I, cons- I consider him the first dab rapper. Who is there before Mabo? Who, go look on his Spotify. Who's there before? Do you hear that, Mabo? He said it. He said it. That's that's straight out of Chad's mouth. Bro. The first unofficial dab rapper. When we started doing this, you know, obviously my identity is kind of hidden unless you know me. I invited him out to our uh, movie theater premiere. He didn't even know who I was. I've known Mabo for years until I took my mask off halfway through the event. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> That's just so funny. Small world. He was telling me, he's like, bro, I didn't even know I fucked with him until he was like, yo, bro, I know you. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I'm still kind of shocked because the uh, the relationship that I got with my boy over here. And, uh, you know, you know, great things happen to great people. And if you work hard, you're going to get what you want. And we to the top with it. Straight up. To the top. <laughs> if you follow that, honestly, if you follow that plant, like, she'll provide. I really, yeah. two, two, three years ago, <coughs> I was like, I was at an Emerald Cup and I remember specifically, I was like, I'm just going to buy it. I'm just going to fucking follow it and like use my moral compass. But like, I'm going to follow where this takes me. And it's been nothing but positive. Bro. Absolutely nothing but positive. It's because it's a community surrounded by good vibes and positive people. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, like I said, I've been rapping for years and years and years. I grew up Lodi, stocked into 209 my whole life. Been shot at, stabbed, fucking, you know, my whole life has been violence and shit like that. Mm-hmm. And with music surrounded by the violence, like, I still rap about it because I'm telling the past, you know what I'm saying? But, like, I've changed my life around for the positive, man. I try to stay positive and promote positivity and good vibes. And, like, being in the community like this and making music like this is just, it's what it, you know, it's what the community needs and it's what's better, you know? You ain't gonna get shot at the fucking sesh. I mean, you might. But it's Local. not, you know, <laughs> it saying, depending on where your sash is. But like Terry might swing at you, but man. like you, you're gonna be you're gonna be okay. You know what I'm saying? Like for the most part, the whole community is solid. Yeah. And promoting good vibes and positivity. For sure. Just, Even when there's beef, like it, it's not really beef. It's just like maybe that guy's getting a little too cool for himself kind of thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. A lot of ego gets into it, but like for and unpaid part, bills. Yeah. Like, that's the biggest thing for me is, like, I don't even want to get into the money of this shit because that's how good relationships are ruined. Yeah. By somebody owing somebody else money <laughs> and running out on it. So, yeah. don't do that. If you're listening to this, don't do that. Straight up. That's some bitch shit. Facts. Facts. I appreciate you bringing up kind of your, your approach at life. Uh, I think my favorite. So, listeners should know that Cali, Lieutenant Cali also does his own solo kind of album rap. Uh, career outside yeah. the water boys and i've listened to a couple albums but i think my favorite track uh was your rendition of sunshine which was like a little uh, play on the popular tiktok track yeah. what inspired that one you know like i said I, I like to touch on the past you know everything i spit everything i rap about is true it's not i don't rap about no fake shit if i say it i've done it it's been there you know like and I just try to wrap up on my life. And with that song, it's like, it's such a good, you know, that whole thank you for sunshine, thank you for rain. It's talking about the joys and the pain in life. Mm-hmm. And that's what I really kind of wanted to touch on, you know, the upbringing of, you know, myself and kind of, you know, my story yeah. and like that kind of shit. And it's like, you know, I am thankful for a lot of things in my life. I'm super grateful for everything I have. Um, and the things that keeps me humble is just the life I've lived. It's, you know. Like I said, it's been treacherous, you know. Yeah. I've been ups and downs, the roller coasters. It's crazy. But I'm still here. I'm still knocking. I didn't think I was going to live this long. I'll tell you that. You asked me when I was 16 years old, how long you think you're going to live? I would have said 21. Crazy. You know what I'm saying? Thank like, God. Thankful he's here, man. This motherfucker changed my life. I still feel like. Has saved my life. I, I feel like literally you got to live like you don't know when you're going to go because. You don't. You don't. You don't know you, when you're going to go. You Dream as if you'll live forever. Live as if you'll die today. Straight up. That's some deep shit. <laughs> if you could go back to that kid growing up, you know, you, you talk about growing up, out the mud, out the dirt. Like, I kind of feel that. What would you tell little Callie? It gets better. Straight up. Yeah. Keep your head up and just keep doing it. What you're doing is working. 
It takes time, takes hard work, takes dedication, but what doesn't, you know what I'm saying? I really been doing it my whole life. Dropped out of high school and fucking was like, I'm doing this shit. How'd you get your start in shit. music? And so like I said, I did that first show. Bro, I really was like, I started making music. I started rapping. And I used to grab the old computer speaker off my dad's desktop and my fucking little iPod. What was it called? Uh, damn, was it, uh, iPod. It's my little iPod yeah, yeah. and the little Apple headphone speaker, just mm-hmm, like that. Mm-hmm. Spitting, recording, and voice memos. Okay. And when I did that shit, I recorded, I save it. Full freestyle, just yeah, you know, yeah, off yeah. the top. And then I send it to all my friends. We email my friends all night. What do you think of this? You know, tell me, like, am I good? And I'd fucking do that shit. And, bro, people instantly loved me. They loved, you know, they're like, dude, that's, that's actually really good. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> and it put it in my mind that, like, you know what? I could do this. Like, you know, I really could do this. And from that point on, it's just, it's all I ever wanted. To get better, to progress, to expand. And I just, man, I've been doing it, bro. Linking up with the Water Boys. I mean, it's, it's crazy. We linked up. <clears throat> I had just seen what they've been doing. Like I said, I've been smoking, you know, dabs since 2013, 2014, very early on. And been smoking since it's forever. Yeah. But, so I was always in that. And so, of course, when they started coming on the scene, I'm seeing what's going on. I'm like, man, this shit is dope. Like, you know, they're making sick-ass content for the community in a whole different way that's never been done. For you sure. know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And I was like, bro, I got to hit him up. I was like, in my head, I'm like, I got to hit him up. I'm talking to my boy, Turpy Junkie. And I'm like, bro, I'm going to hit the Water Boys up tomorrow. See what's up. See if they're trying to work. Yeah, yeah. That night, Chad hits me up. <laughs> it's like, yo, I've been listening to your music for hella years. I'm from Stockton. That's He's like, fucking funny. I want to know if you'd be down to make a song with us. <laughs> that's how Dabs on Me came out. And that's how Dabs on Me came out, bro. Give me a little, give me a little verse from Dabs on Me. Let me, let me remember. Let's <laughs> next time back. we meet. Next, next time, time we meet. meet. Yeah, you know that I the Dabs on verse. Me. Like, where'd you go? Like, where you gone? That day you left, it was like, you done dropped a bomb. I know your verse more than I know mine. <laughs> <laughs> that's just heat. That's what that means. No, I'll get us some West Coast. That's the best smoke. That's right. Hold on. How do I start off, though? No, nah, it's all good. It's all I good. I want to know I, now, I put though. It's my head. I put you on the spot. I was Waterboard trying to make, song. like, a, a Bone Thugs type track. <laughs> this is a banger, bro. We got to perform this. That's we don't perform it because it's kind of sad, you know? Like, we <laughs> like to perform bro. this one, bro. Yeah, for sure. Damn, I can't even begin to understand the pain I started feeling when you gone. <laughs> Inhale, let's smoke, exhale on the song. Get us some West Coast, that's the best smoke. We about to blast off. So much dad smoke in the room, room it's getting, getting hard, hard to see. see. But next time you around, just know that the dab's on me. Uh. Oh, I'm going crazy on that shit. Bro, for real, dab's on me. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, it's one of my favorite records. Bro. That, hey, that slaps. And for me to really be like, I'm making a song with the Water Boys right now. We're doing this shit. And that's what they sent me. I was like, no way. That slaps, bro. That's so dope. Real I was talk. like, bro, this shit's. Oh. And then come out with the sickest Avatar themed cartoon. Bro. Dabatar? Yeah, we, yeah Dabatar. We're going to make a. We're going to make a little mini movie about that eventually. Man. Six hour fucking animation. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and ever since that moment, we really... We've been, been locked in. Literally. It we got two or three albums together. We got hella shit together. He's in t- all the turf wars. Like I said, bro, you know, he's a water boy. 100%. We got a lot of shit coming, a lot of new stuff coming. Man, it is dope. Yeah. You feel I, me? I really fuck with some of the shit you guys are putting bro. out, man. Like, that song, it just... It, it slaps. You know what I mean? That's Dude, some Bay Area stuff, too. It slaps. You feel me? Yeah. Like, that's some real classic shit instantly. Like We got enough different influences, like I said... Brad's out here making metal his whole life, but <laughs> like you said, if you've made metal, everything's a step down from that. So yeah. he understands rhythm on a deeper level. Yeah, yeah, straight for up. sure. Uh, makes it easy for him to just hit anything. It's crazy. That's, does he make the beats, or you guys got some of our beats? We yeah. you, we got a homie named Slater. Yeah, Slater, Slater produced, produced it's my dog. Okay, he does a lot. He made the hash beat. Straight he made up. spaceship. He yeah. made the sunshine beat. Slater's yeah. a fucking animal. Straight up. Shout and out. And Nether Friends, bro. Yeah, He's, Nether Friends yeah. makes a lot of our beats right Straight now. Straight up. Like, it's, we got it. That's what I'm saying. The team, we got it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We locked 
Mm. And the Water Boys, you know, it's always been about some team shit. You know, it's Straight like up. I felt like I was on the sidelines a whole a long time in the cannabis industry. And when I started this brand, I wanted anybody to know that like if you sat around and watched a bunch of people achieve greatness, then you're you're in prime position to achieve greatness yourself. Hundred percent. Who better? You know, you soaked up all that game. You know, what I'm saying don't ever be afraid to be the Water Boy either, because like I said, that's a great place to to, to learn. That's you know, a great way to look at it, man. I definitely, you know, soaked up a lot of game from a lot of OGs and sat on the sidelines and watched people make plays that I wanted to make. That's like the Aaron Rodgers playbook right there. It's like, you know what, just take your beats, like yep. take your lumps as they come, watch how it's done, and then when you're ready it's and it's your turn, you're in there. 10,000 hours, you know, to be a master, so you just got to get your time in. You got to fold in paper cranes, man. Doing the work when nobody's watching. That's what it's all about. Writing those fucking lyrics on a plane in an hour and a half. <laughs> Yeah. The stewardess all be looking at us rolling our phone. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. We be rapping sometimes. Sometimes I'll yeah, 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 yeah. like, rap. You have to. He's like, what do you think of this? He's spinning. He's whispering. Like, We're in that terminal. You know, oh, oh, yeah. This one I got. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got a cypher going in the middle of the terminal. <laughs> oh, People looking at us like, We're crazy. But oh, we got man. enough of us to where it always just seems like everybody's down. Yeah. You know, it's like collective thinking, you know. So mm-hmm. that's another big part of the reason why I like the crew to be so big because we got a real big collective effort here. It's the it's mycelium of, of the yeah. Water Boys, and we're trying to take yeah. over. We're trying yeah. to get everybody to, on that same collective thought. Hell yeah! It's Straight all it's up. all one fucking umbrella. Yep. Oh, I God. love that shit. Who are, who are you fucking with? That's new to the game, in terms of uh, music. Music wise, yeah. Hmm. New to the game. Let me see. There is some. Man, the Water Boys. The Water Boys. You're like, that's all I listen I to. I listen to a lot of my own music, for sure. Yeah, that's, hey, that's yeah, a you choosable know thing. Let's, let's no, choose. I've been, listening, I've been listening to a lot of Mabo. He got an album called Perfect Timing. Hey, there ain't out. no skips on that motherfucker. Just put that motherfucker on and listen. Hey, Hell yeah. Shout out. Hey, Mabo, if you'll give us permission, I'll play one of your tracks at the end of our episode. Hell yeah. Play. Yeah, hell yeah. We'll just do a play out. I'll, I'll do a little play out for hell you. Yeah. Yeah, um, <laughs> we'll, we'll let the Water Boys pick that track if he'll give us permission. So. Hell uh, he yeah. got better ones than the one we did. He got this one called Move Different. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, La Russell? Fuck yeah, yeah. Okay. Russell. Russell. Sure, got to move, I just, I just did a post about him today, man. I was fucking with what he was saying about bro, how he was... He's got to move, move dope, bro. I've been seeing him everywhere. Yeah. yeah everywhere. He's, he's doing it right. Bro. Yeah. He's really got, you know... He just keeps doubling down on himself, and that's, you know... That's how you're yeah. supposed when to do it. When you ask it, about man. the inspirations, you know, that's another dude, you know, the reason why I say 50 Cent, the reason why I say La Russell, the reason why I say guys like Jay-Z, is these motherfuckers... They didn't just stop at the music. The music is a platform, you know. I'm trying to unlock all different levels of hustle, and the music is a platform to do that. Unlock a new level. We make a movie. Unlock a new level. We Straight make some up, clothing bro. lines. Unlock a new level. Next thing you know, we got our own fucking weed soda. Who knows? We just out Big here unlocking coming. shit. There ain't nothing we can't manifest. Just keep watching the show. Hemp water, bro. Water boys. Up. Hemp water. No, oh, man, for sure. We, we want to drop Hell yeah. Hell yeah, bro. Oh, God. Hell yeah. That just worked. Uh, what's your motivation in music? Ultimately, lately, I just feel like the music scene's been stale. I watch a lot of interviews. I've seen a lot of people talking about uh, how uh, you know the music scene needs originality. So I feel like that's what we bring, and it keeps me going. I know no one else is making music for people like us. So while the opportunity is golden, you know, while no one else is doing it, there's no competition. It's really easy for me to just pump out content and get better and better and better. And every album we pump out is the album we're ahead. Hell yeah. Straight you know. Hell yeah. Get it like out I said, there. Like the community is a big motivation too. That's like that's that's why we do it. You know, we do it for ourselves, but like it's a community behind us. Because no one represents these people. Nobody, bro. Mm-hmm. You know, people everybody think hates con- on them. The connoisseur mm-hmm. market is you know, so like, small, no one's really gonna create a product for them. Dang. I but, feel it. That's that's why we're doing this. You know, like exactly. because, yeah. because it's like I've Education. been smoking weed for years and I also fucking do my shit. And yeah. like I'm not a lazy stoner. I'm a stoner. Exactly, we're trying Straight to just break up. the barriers for show sure. people that uh, it ain't gotta be like it is. Nah, you can smoke right. I think that's one of the biggest problems with the connoisseur uh, market is that it's rooted in a, a fair amount of hate or exclu- like elitism. Gatekeeping. Gatekeeping, yeah. People, they'll get a good jar, they'll get a good plug. You know, they'll find some new rosin and like, you know, they don't want anybody to know about it because then you know they'll get it'll cost them money. I understand it. But at the same time, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get people to know about the Water Boys. That's another reason why we pump out so many different. Water Boys. 
so many different forms of media is because they can't stop us. You can't gatekeep us because you know what I'm saying. It's yeah. like in the it's movies, all you. the music's in there. Yeah, Straight we got down. everything that the mo- the record labels have. Everything the movie studios have. have Another major thing that we have is Instagram loves to hate on the community. Yep. Even but, though they make a lot of money out of them. Exactly. And so there's so many people out there making content for this community that's getting taken down. And our com- you, our, you know, our content is sticking through because it's cartoon based. We make it lighter and easier. We make it more palatable so that you can We're trying to watch make it. a way out of nothing like Martin exactly. Luther King said, you know what I'm saying? Straight up. Shout out to King. Change the world. Dollar in a dream. Yard. Straight J. up. J. Cole. J. Cole's one of my favorites. For, I, for real. His lyricism is... Unmatched. Him and Kendrick are pretty hot. Like I feel like Kendrick is more of an artist than, yeah. than what Cole does. Um, the only I, one I think that comes close to Cole on punchlines is Lil Wayne. Lil, I mean, Lil you know Wayne's been that's, doing it off top since That's what forever. I'm saying. It's literally so hard to like compare the two. Yeah. Like, fuck, man. It's... Mm. Yeah, J. That's good I mean, music right there. But see, those are two completely different approaches to rap too. Because J. Cole sits down and writes all this shit, and Straight like, up. sure he does some off the top, but like that shit is written out, planned, and like very yeah. meticulous. Whereas Wayne will be like, fucking, Turn that mic on. yeah, and he'll just cipher <laughs> up like two fucking hits, and yeah. it's like, bro, that's just something special too. It's too di- like Eminem, he does it both ways. But like even the best, Chris Rock has some of the best writers for him that are their own comedians. Because there, there's, I mean, you guys know, you'll write some shit and you'll be like, that's not really some Chad Brad shit, but that's some Cali oh, yeah. shit. You know, I've definitely and so written just, songs for other people. I've 100%. written country songs. I've, you know, Cali don't write my songs. No. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> Hey, you can tell, hey. tell Callie don't write my shit. Hey, real my talk. Shit ain't as cold as his. That would be so funny. I just saw that in like the Waterboys animation. Like Callie comes in, <laughs> yeah. and then and then Chad goes, "Man, Callie doesn't write my shit." And then Mabo just peeks in. I do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking love you. I do, bro. Uh, that shit. That shit's hella funny. Uh, All right, so we're gonna hook you up. Who wants the the trident and who wants the saber? I like a saber. It sounds cool. What's a saber? This is the saber. It's just a little glass bubbler. They're basically the same thing. This is just bigger. And that has a carb in the back, no button. And this has a carb right here. How do I do it? So you just, what you'll do is you can either hold the button down and it'll laser, or you can double click and it'll hold and it'll laser for nine seconds. You just pull as I'm as tapping with laser. lasers, bitch. So just double click it or hold it down. You can like hold it like a little bubbler too. And, uh, and it'll go and just hit it while it's doing it. Oh, that. shit. Look at it! Get that laser bong. Lasers, blazers, blazers. Frickin' lasers man. attached to my frickin' bongs. Jesus, wheeze, man. Ooh. The casino got the tech? Got the tech? Hi, Toki. Tell him what it is. Smoke none now. Ha <laughs> ha! Dabbing with lasers. I'm smoking fucking. with lasers. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if you can dab with a hi, Toki. Oh. oh, yeah, for sure. But not straight. Wait a minute. Uh, Why not? Because it, it would just laser. run straight through. It's a blazer, but blazer, what you do is you put flour laser. and then rosin on top, and you can do a, a hash hole topper. out of the laser. Oh, that was one of the craziest things. I felt like I was dabbing in a laboratory. <laughs> Bro! I felt like I was dabbing with fucking it's doctors. A dabratory? Dabratory! That was the an experience. Dab- Dexter's dabatory? Bro, that was a real experience. I might need to get a sign made that says the dabratory. Yes. Oh, for sure. I love it. That was one of the most wild experiences. Of my life. Hey, next time I see you, I'll have a new attachment. We can all try together. I felt like I was dabbing with the dude from uh, Spider-Man. You were. Like the Hobgoblin or something. Hey, let them know, though. Hobgoblin? Yeah. The Green Goblin? But let them Hytoki people. Better than the Knob Gobbler, you know what I mean? (laughs) If if you're listening, Hytoki, let's work on a Waterboys attachment that lets you dab with lasers. Yeah. You know, we can develop that together. I'll be like the test dummy. We'll make Callie take all the bad dabs. Nope. And it'll be popping. Holler at me. I'll take some hot ones. All right. We'll hook you up with the Hitoki Familia. And uh, we'll we'll try to get some water boy attachments going. Dab. That'd be sick. You know what I can see? Like, maybe having like a cone shape thing with a. The real question is how hot that is. Well, the problem is that it would. You can't have holes in the bottom, or it'll just seep right yeah. through. You have to have some kind of. Do you know what flat... temp that laser is? I don't, but you it has three different settings, and I'm sure uh, Hitoki could help you out. I'm with sure that if info. they looked at a Puffco and saw how it works, 
They can apply all the things well, that work got, about the puff coat to their. You gotta think about though with the laser. Out. That's what I'm saying. It would take a minute for that to heat up. You gotta no, like, bro, it's gotta, instant. That's what I'm saying. You gotta hit the wax with the laser. So what I'm thinking that's is instead do. of going like this, it goes like this, and you have the attachment on top, mm. and it heats from the bottom. You dab it. It goes. That'd bro, be kind of fire, bro. Look at this. Where's your little thing? Where's your little thing? Your your rig, your banger. Oh, it's in the... So this heats from the bottom of that, and you still got that turp slurp. Yeah. All you gotta do is have a carb cap. It heats it from right there, fucking instant. I'm saying. Let's get it going. It'd be crazy. That's It'd be awesome. crazy if they could figure out how to temp that laser to like 510 degrees. I guarantee. And I mean, then just instantly they can hit do the wax anything, like, Cali. They can do anything. <laughs> Shout out Hitoki. Yes. I believe in you. I believe in you. <laughs> Hey, I can believe in the classics. I mean, the Hitoki laser bong. Where are they from? They're. I, I want to say. I know they're working with Nate Diaz, so I want to say they're oh, local. Big that's so yeah, fire. yeah. Hey, the Stockton denial. Slap. Oh, bro. I've been trying to get that's the homie goal. on, bro. That's what we'll call the dad ring, the Stockton Slap. No. Oh, with the laser dad. Yeah. The Stockton he's slap. already. He's already working with Hitoki. Oh, Let's bro. get it going, bro. We gonna run it yeah, up. I'm trying yeah. to meet Nate. Hell yeah, same. Dad with homie. I'm a big fan of fucking MMA since the get. Like. Right, I've been talking with it for a while. Too. Yeah, hell yeah. Let's get it going. Oh, God. The Hitoki laser bong. What could go better with Turp Wars than a laser bong? Laser. I mean, a laser dab rig. Yes. But it we're going to make mean, that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's lasers. For sure. No, in space. I saw it. Laser yep. bongs in space. Yeah, it felt like I was going to, de- like, maybe I was adding fuel to the spaceship. It was going to be yeah. like. <laughs> that was plasma, that was bro. Blasma. You were smoking straight plasma. Did Yo, you see that? I'm the first rapper to smoke plasma. I What's up? That's Have you guys seen Good Thing? <laughs> <laughs> you know about hash holes. You know. Have you heard about a black hole? Oh God, maybe. You... Okay, so I. Who are you this talking about? Back. I posted this well. While... I'm from Stockton. <laughs> so the black hole is when you roll up a hash hole with okay. some mids, oof, and some reclaim. Oh God, who the fuck's oh, rolling reclaim hash holes? That sounds like something that's a some high school kid would do. That sounds douche like some Stockton type shit, shit. Actually, hold on. That's some douche Vader type that shit. That sounds like the real Stockton slapper that's right there, yo. <laughs> that's the, that's the dark side if I've ever heard of one. Have you ever heard of a black hole? No way. <laughs> <laughs> I hate whoever hit invented them. that. I hate you. Oh, if you're well, doing actually, that... I'll, I'll, I'll tell you something. That was me. Damn. You invented it? Yeah, hell yeah, bro. Oh, hell yeah. So, I don't hate Casino. <laughs> let me clarify. It was, it was a total prank roll. I was going to give it to my boy as a hash. I'll be Ooh. like, bro, you got to smoke this up and see his reaction. I can see people smoking that. 100%, bro. Like, bro. Like, what's Sell the that fuck? for four bucks on the street corner, bro. <laughs> <laughs> You get a black Put a little hole. tobacco in there too, just for the fucking shits and gigs. It's a cold world. You get a black hole and a blowjob, bro. <laughs> oh God! Yo. We'll Five bucks. Provide. Five bucks. I am cutting that for sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Lieutenant Cali, you got anything coming up solo in the future? You all water boys all day, baby. We water boys all day, but I am working on some new shit. Me and Trap House Coda got an album coming along. Gonna have some Waterboy features on it. Hell yeah. Most got definitely. It. We sprinkling Waterboys everywhere, man. Got it. Shouts out my boy D-Rod from the 209, man. Me and him got a project going. We thinking about dropping it closer to the first of the year and shit. Uh, a lot right. of new music going, man. We got so much shit coming. Love it. So much, man. Me and Robbo gonna get some shit going, too. Hell yeah. Ooh. He's gonna tell him. <laughs> We gonna get it popping, man. What are you guys either coolest or favorite smoking spot? Because some people are like, eh, I don't really have a coolest, but like, okay, where's your go? My favorite spot to smoke is at home. Yeah, I feel like I get the best dabs, yeah. the most enjoyment at home. It's my favorite, yeah, favorite it's place. The most to controlled dab. environment, you know. All right, then where's the coolest place if you can think of a cool, like a dope smoke spot? Man, we dabbed in New York. That we, was cool. We dabbed in Fuga de Chao. Yeah, in Fuga de Chao in Boston. That was dope. That was pretty tight. Put me on some, what's, what's Fuga de Chao? It's like a Brazilian steakhouse. It's a oh, nice ass restaurant. So fire. Downtown Boston. We just went up in there. We had Hell, yeah. Lamb chops. Steaks they just on cut the it till you flip your car. Manager was huh? getting mad at us. He's like, I heard you guys might be smoking back so here. So y'all you smoking in here? That. We're like, oh, I'm sorry, sir. He walked away. We're right back to smoke. Yeah. Right, uh, the waitress, she's like, I'm from California. Water boys, baby. Like, Bro, I swear to God, she's like, she's like 209 on her Duh. knuckles. <laughs> <laughs> she starts off like, yeah, that's my manager. He don't get it. I did a stint in Orange County. I was like, man, I knew you was cool. <laughs> <laughs> I I she a... was, she, uh. 
Man. Yeah, gave her a good tip. <laughs> hey, but I ain't even gonna cap though. My favorite blunt spot, my favorite place to smoke a backwood oh. is in Berkeley. Yeah. It's called Indian Rock. It's this big ass rock that's been there for hella years, that's man. The spot. Since the, you straight up the climb that motherfucker, you smoke, <laughs> you looking at the whole bay. You yeah. seeing everything, man. It's, oh. Is that on the Berkeley campus? Grizzly it's, Peak. Yeah, Grizzly oh, okay. Peak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Straight that's up. That's where I've seen it. That's some real deal stoner shit right there. Love that. Mm. And I took my rig up there one time. Took a dab. Yeah, was, I was scared. I like I like taking like, like the man, I'm gonna drop something or bro that thing. Would Take that. Hurt. That's a backpack. Exactly, mm. bro. That's like the the puffco for flour, bro. Straight in my up. opinion, like you don't need you can smoke it anywhere. Dude, you don't have to worry about wind. You don't have to worry about water. You know what I mean? It's yeah. it's pretty legit. Um, my only thing let is let me hit it, this one right here. The big one? boy, yeah. Pack me up. Yeah, it's already done. Oh, um, let me hit that motherfucker. So just a double click and it'll stay on, and then that, that little button on the side is the carb. So you'll like feather it, push it in to open it, kind of thing. Oh, you can just shit. rip it. Callie's ripping that big old trident. I told you that thing's milk. It's got a dog. big laser. Hell yeah, Ooh, it's crazy as fuck. Hell yeah, bro. Whoa. What's that? What's the uh, <coughs> the big ass laser in the Death Star that they shoot? You know, in the Star Wars, I know they shoot that. To I don't blow know what the... they call it, though. Yeah. Laser beam. It was a killer thing, though. The, plant, the Star Killer. Is Something it like, like a double? You could hit it again, you think? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Double click it. And then, so my only my only downside to that mm-hmm. is I only smoke flour, and I just smoke bowl after bowl after bowl. I could smoke a thousand bowls a day with this. The problem with that is it takes a lot of, it's like Cleaning? a doctor. Cleaning? Yeah, exactly. It's like a, it's like a puff coat. Everything's clean. You know, like but if you're a real dabber, you got to clean your puff coat daily. True. Like you, but you know, so it's like. I like flowers, so I, I'm i not used to that uh, time lapse. Like I yeah, like to load a bowl, smoke it, load a bowl, smoke it, maybe load a bowl, smoke it. quicker, you know. And then yeah. do my thing. To have know? the cleanup to it. But like, I mean, compared to like a vaporizer, I don't know, this is crazy. Like. It's dope. It is. It's really Super cool. Super dope. One of the coolest things I've seen for flower specifically. If they fucking with the nine. I'm fucking with them. You know yeah, what I'm saying? For sure. This is for some sure. real shit. Double it, click. You can probably hit it one more time, and then you'll have to like mix it up, and I'll show you how to do that. I would leave it closed for a minute, so you get. It. Yeah, there you go. Now hit it. Yeah, bro. If you're double hitting it, <coughs> it's the same hit. You can get it uh, cherried in there too, if you like. This one actually smokes harder, in my opinion, than that one does, just what because you can get it cherried so yeah, easily. It on the melt <coughs> <laughs> so how does this open? I twist it? Yep, just a quarter twist. Yeah, and so you'll use like, um, yeah, there's that little poker. Just use that to mix it up. No, it's cool. On some real shit, bro. Like, I'm not done with the episode, but I really appreciate you guys coming through. This is a good time, oh, so bro, I appreciate great. it. Time. That's what I'm saying, dude. We everywhere we go, we sesh. You know what I'm saying? We bring it with us. Except for the radio station, they don't let us smoke yeah. on the radio. Fucking bitches. I know. It's on college campus. It's not there for home. Shout out to Bubbly Brook in now the background. Now he's all about ob- <coughs> automatic smoking. Oh yeah, automatic shout smoke. out Bubbly Brook. <coughs> yep. She's on Instagram. <laughs> we smoking automatically? Check out her links. In the bio. Oh my god. Oh. All right, so we've smoked on some sanctuary farms. Yep. Mabo, did you roll up some of that uh, maraschino cherry for us? Is that the one we just smoked? I think we smoked that no. one. Oh, did we? Yeah. We, we just smoked up that. Smoked Damn, we like got four nothing. fucking rolls already. Burning, I think. Yeah. Shit. I'm, this one right here? Four lone soldiers in the ashtray. Yeah, that's the cherry. Man, we've been smoking some of this Elbow Farms. That shit smokes, bro. That Elbow Farms, Maraschino Cherry. Sanctuary Cherry Farms. Sanctuary, man. There's a yeah, lot of right So Sanctuary Farms is cool, man. They got a spot. Uh, they're women and minority owned. Um, Shout out women. Hell yeah, bro. Shout out minorities. So, <laughs> yes. Yes. Billy. No, that's the whole thing. Like my first more. season, man, I had zero women on the show, and I came in second season, and I was like, "Fuck that!" So I made sure to get some women, some minority-owned companies. Like we, love we need Brooke to get her own episode. Yeah. Hell yeah, yeah. we we'll get Brooke on episode. I mean, yeah, maybe a Brooke. You know, talk about what Brooke fucking does. fucks with the cannabis <laughs> industry. We'll see. She smokes. I know she been smoking hard back there. <laughs> She's a model like for the two days ago. Yeah. She be dabbing. Well, I'll make her model. dab, but... Yeah, post some of our shit, and we'll see what we can fuck with. You know what I mean? You should drink the fuck out of some wine. You from around here, or are you from <laughs> up in... No, I'm from Seattle, like Sacramento. Okay, yeah. cool. But I travel all over California. We're yeah. based in... <coughs> You're based in where? Based in Merced. Okay. Yes, but I travel... Beautiful all Merced. Yeah, it's a beautiful place. <coughs> but the I travel all the way to Chico, all the way to Los Angeles. <coughs> Like, I go to Los Angeles or Chico, just depends. Gotcha. So, 
<laughs> Kelly, tell me about some of your tattoos. What you, what you got going? Got so many tattoos. And by the way, I should say that's Kelly K A L I. Yo. Okay, don't. The lieutenant. The lieutenant. Smoking hash is where he be. L L T K A L I. Yes, sir. Lieutenant Kelly. Man, I got so my first tattoo is I'll start there. Uh, my 18th birthday. My boy Tommy. Shouts out Tommy, man. Uh, he hit me up. He's like, hey, bro, I know you wanted to get some tattoos done. Come through the shop. I'll bless you up. So I'll hook you up with a real good price. And I was like, man, my first tattoo I wanted to do was a music note because, of, you know, my love for music. And mm -hmm. at that point, I'm 18. I'm really like, that's what I'm doing for the rest of my life. I know it. You know, I'm really, I was like, I want to get my hands at it because people always say, fucking, oh, if you got your hands tatted, you can't get a good job. You can't. Fuck you. I put it right there on my hand. I got mm -hmm. a music note right there on my thumb. And he hasn't had a good job since. <laughs> I ain't had to, you know what I'm saying? And then on this arm, I got like a, you know, a decently little done California bear. Mm -hmm. It ain't really, it's like the outline kind of. I love that shit. They're my first two tattoos on my 18th birthday. Nice. And then pretty much every year after that, I just got another tattoo. It's kind of like my birthday gift to myself. I get another tattoo and shit. I mean, I got I got Cali on my knuckles representing me, you know what I'm saying? I got a rose on my left hand and a compass under my wrist. It's my compass to always find my way home. My compass rose. I've always loved roses. I always tell people, wake up and smell the roses. Mm -hmm. I got Michael Myers on my neck. You know what I'm saying? I'm a scary-ass motherfucker. Yeah. But I love scary movies, too. Gotcha. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. I grew up just watching movies. Hella, my family owned a little VHS rental spot. And so I just watched so many movies. And yeah, Halloween was one of my favorites. Michael Myers. Yeah, yeah. One of my favorites. Along with, like, you know, Chucky, Scream, all the classics. But, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, a lot of my tattoos, they all mean something. You know what I'm saying? I got, psh, got the Glock tattoo on my wrist. Shouts out Glock. My Glock saved my life. Yeah. Way too many times. I carry a gun to protect my life. You know yeah. what I'm saying? No, I, was, I mean, Stockton, honestly, like, <laughs> people don't talk about that shit, but for a minute, it oh, was like bro. the capital of the, the murder right capital. Here. Straight up. What like, the fuck? What's cracking? We got these. We need to get high. We got candy addiction. Yeah, we're over here yeah. trying to figure out our snacks. <laughs> Eat one of those. What uh? What's your birthday? You were talking about your birthday? December second. It's coming. Oh, up. Oh shit, bro! That's me? my girl's birthday. Oh no shit! Shout out Sagittarius. K Shout out K Banks. K thanks K Banks. You guys are gonna be at MJ Bizcon? I don't think no. we're making it. We okay. were really trying. What about Heat Quest? What's that? Yeah. That's Jimmy Devine's thing down in Las Vegas. Oh, kind of like a trans bay, but it's but it's an open format from what I understand. It's right before Hash Roll Day. Isn't yep, it? yep. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we're not gonna make yeah. it. Okay. Uh, my girl does stand up out in Vegas, so I'd be like, you oh, gotta really? check her out. Really? Yeah, yeah. She's what? hella funny, bro. I just had her on. So I've had her. She's my girl from like fourth grade, bro. Like, Brad no does way. stand up too. Who does? Oh, Brad? Brad? Yeah, yeah. We should get her in inter like an interp wars type thing. If she's a comedian, you know what I'm saying? We're trying to get so, comedians on. Yeah. I'm not the kind of guy who's gonna get up on stage and tell jokes, but like I've always wanted to be on that I can see you on the stage though. I ain't even gonna lie to you. I can see you up there like it's you look th proper. It's, like, it's on my thing, right? Like I feel it. I'd love to write jokes. I like my mind's always running. Yeah. Like what? A, he was like, "Tell me a joke right now." He's like, "You write jokes. Tell me a joke." And I was like, "All right." The kind of beans someone's eating tells me a lot about them. Like or like what they what kind of beans they got in their house. They got a lot of like you know refried beans or like pinto beans. All right, like I'm probably fucking with you. If you got some like kidney beans or some like dry ass fucking garbanzo? lentils, bro. Garbanzos. Like, well, so first and foremost, I fuck with garbanzos. I hard. love garbanzos. Do I'm, not fuck with I'm hummus. I'm Lebanese. What? You can miss me with some hummus, no bro. No way, It's the bro. texture. It's the texture. What? But I love all the ingredients, right? Okay, the okay. olive oil, the garlic, the chickpeas. I consider the bean the Mexican potato. What's the plans for 2024 for Water Boys? Whoo! A lot of water shit. That's nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. We definitely want to... Uh, everything we've done to this point has kind of been like on the fly. Like, oh, let's do this. Let's do that. And we just keep doing stuff. We've been making albums. Uh, so certainly in 2024, I imagine there will be a lot of albums. Oh, yeah. But, we got a uh, lot of new music coming. Definitely going to get a tour together. Oh, yeah. Keep we, it going. Lots of new cartoons, new content. We want to finish a cartoon before we av advertise it next time. Like, Straight up. have it fully worked out. Try and figure out some sponsorship placements inside of it with a fully worked up product. Mm -hmm. See what we have to offer the world. Hell yeah. And really go all out. We, we got a lot of ideas. We want to pump out a lot more short form content too for the people. It seems like that's what they like. <laughs> Say, what's the best one? The best weed? Yeah. And you're like the best, you know? No, I'm just trying to. That like, sanctuary Pluto. Yeah, the, the Pluto's pretty that fire. That did taste crazy. Um, Pluto's named after my homie's dog. Yeah. yeah. I heard he's not a real dog anymore, though. Pluto? It's like, it's like the planet. 
Is that a real dog? That took him a quick second. He's like, wait, what? Hold on. I get it. I don't know, man. That's a hard question because you like GMO. So let me get you Dude, some. Uh, you got funky. some? Yeah, let me get some. Why don't you just fucking help yourself to these terps? Okay, this let's is, see. This is a limited edition raw That's great. papers oh, rolling tray. What? That's a skateboard. That is I think so he good. says you get to have that when the. I did not. Over. That was a gift to myself. <laughs> he said, I think you said. <laughs> yeah. Kid Cones. My boy, Kid Cones. From one of the Shouts out, Kid Cones. He, he used to work for Raw. He doesn't anymore, but he, he hooked me up with that. What's he up? needs a flour mill. Flour mill. Flour mill coming in stat. Oh. Wait, where's the big one? Where's oh, the it's big right mill? Here too. I got too many of these bitches laying around. The big mill. Yeah, they're they're Yo, very limited. Holler at me, CGO. I need a flour mill. <laughs> the I thing need is, one first. Oh yeah, this shit fucking smokes. I think I haven't I haven't even hit it yet. If you it's give it to here. me, Marco, I'll take it and then I'll proceed to give it to Callie. He proceeded. I'll won't. regift it. <laughs> I'll regift it. No, I'm telling you right now. Like, if next time I see you, I'll, I'll try to have at least two in hand, if like not that. three. And it's so the flour mill is super labor like if if the hitoki is labor intensive, it's the opposite for the flour mill. You almost feel like you're not even grinding that shit. I literally just like, man. Yeah. I've had people be like, Oh, when when is it done? And I'm like, bro, you finished like <laughs> four turns ago. <laughs> oh, you're just hitoking it up, huh? I like this thing. Yeah, that thing fucking hits, bro. And I'm smoking out the prism water pipe. I gotta say, man, prism this water. is one I don't spend a lot of money. We were talking about that earlier. I don't spend a lot of money on my glass. I am a family man. I have a budget for weed every week. I feel that. Very tight budget. So this kind of thing is huge for me. I like glass. I smoke bongs. You can switch them out. There's different like percolators you can add. You can do a different base with a different oh, top, what? different colors. That's pimp. This thing fucking rips, bro. You one of you guys want to rip this? Shit's tight. I don't smoke flour that much. All right, I'll rip it. I'll rip it then. This is uh, we call her ET. She's got the little it's hard. psychedelic shit in the back, a little prism uh, ET shit. And, you know, they're big supporters of the show. So I was like, That's to, tight. So, like, you break the top, you just switch it out. It's like, you know, 50 bucks or whatever. You don't have to buy a whole new piece. Um, you can get. A bottom? What's up? What if you break the bottom? You just buy a new bottom. I like what You'd you have said, to hold though, it sideways. because, you know. You're telling, you're saying you have a weekly weed budget, and I think that's something that the kids need to be thinking about. You know. You also said you're a family man. Mm -hmm. My family budget's my hash budget. Yeah, it's family. I've <laughs> I've known that I wanted to be a uh, father my whole life, like since I was like six. That's dope. And it's still the hardest thing I've ever done, but like it's also the most rewarding. You know, it's it, you can never choose one or the other. You either you either go with it or you don't, right? And there's no right or wrong answer. I have a lot of friends who are like. I don't think I ever want kids. I'm like, fucking great. Don't. Because if you don't, if you do, it's hard. You know what I mean? And if you don't. It's even harder. It's, yeah. It's, it, that's how kids end up in bad places, you know? I feel like a father to a lot of these brands out here. What? Copying my style. <laughs> and more, like a, more like a dentist because they're biting off you. <laughs> but you also, you were talking about being the water boy. Like you worked on some plants for a long time. Like. You still do, I'm sure. Eating all my snacks. Those, that's, you know, you, you grow an attachment to those plants. Like, you really do. And you see them every day. And if you're the water boy, you're watering mm -hmm. them and you're touching them. Water. And you're like, oh, I need to get this leaf off. So whether you have a real child or a, or a animal or a plant or just a friend in your head, you know, yeah. it's important that you have these things that, like, help you grow as a person, I think. 100%. You know, and family does that for me. And it pushes me, like, you know, like we were saying, that the... the you guys are about to laugh. I got a $50 a week budget, right? That's what I'm supposed to get all my fucking weed through. That's, that's not even a good gram of rosin. So that's, what, 200 a month? That's yeah. what that equals, yeah. 200 a month. Look at the big but that ain't shit belly. if you're smoking, like, good shit. Like, you get an ounce. That's like one fire ounce. Exactly. And that's that's friends and family deal. For a month. Shout, Shout out, out elbows. Shout out. But yeah, so I'm sure you know what it feels like to be cup pot committed. Yeah, and for sure. At this point, I've been in cannabis my whole life. My dad grew weed. I remember thinking about, are the feds going to kick in the door when I was five years old? So it's all I've ever known. It would be really weird for me to do anything else. I had a couple jobs or whatever, but. What was your first job? Helping my stepdad paint houses. So mm. I used to be a tape guy. That sucks. Mm. Oh, yeah. Shitty <laughs> ass job. Oh, that's what a sucks, tape guy. Bro. I hated painting the house with my dad. No, thank you. So I taped for hours. And then um, the best job 
Or one of my favorite jobs is I worked at a Thai restaurant for like seven years. Ooh, fire! I learned a lot of a lot of game there. Were you in the kitchen? I was a waiter. Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, that's like okay. I'm not super. I was also raised not completely like my parents aren't Jehovah's Witness, but my grandma was Jehovah's Witness. Mm. So like, I was basically raised Jehovah's Witness. My dad grew weed and was trapping, and he was a single dad. So basically, at, Jehovah's Witness. I was at, <laughs> yeah, I was at my grandma's house a lot. Oh, gotcha. okay, uh, okay, okay. And so, you know, I, I went around knocking on doors since I was five or six years old, talking mm-hmm. to people about Jesus or whatever. Mm-hmm. So between that and being a waiter, yeah, <laughs> it's, the fuck off. It's, it's super it's super easy to go on stage and rap. <laughs> That's so fucking funny. I truly believe so I everybody should have to work in a restaurant oh, for, for sure. a year or two. Oh, yeah. Because that will break the Karen right out of you. <laughs> you know, yeah. it might make you not want to eat at a restaurant for sure, or it might make you want to get in the kitchen and fucking cook some real shit. Bro, that's what I ended up doing. And like, bro, once you get into the food side, I ran a barbecue restaurant for two years, bro. That shit oh. was in Lodi, bro. I was stuck in Lodi. That shit was gas packed, man. They still around? Nah, the owners ended up fucking up the business and shit. Yeah. Man. Was that place named after the Creedence Clearwater song? You know, <laughs> that the song Lodi the, stuck in Lodi again. The dude tried to tell to me. Be. The, no, the owner tried to tell me he never heard that song before. <laughs> Shut up! I swear to God! Shut bro. up! There's, There's no like, way you did it. I swear. Hey, I said I love Creedence Clearwater revival, and this guy said, <laughs> oh, he yeah, said "No, hey, you know what he happened? Said, he got a cease and desist letter." <laughs> And he's like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> this motherfucker said, I've never heard of them in my life. I was like, I no swore it on a Bible ten years ago. So, <laughs> oh, but it was. I mean, come to find out, the restaurant was failing when me and my homie got brought in, and what we did for the restaurant kept us open for two years. We literally, I mean, changed it around. My buddy that was with me, he was a cook. Since fucking birth down here. And I've always been able to get down. My dad taught me how to cook, especially barbecue. So it was just, man, 18 hours smoked brisket over the weekends. Hell yeah. We Tell about the barbecue fucking, in Texas. Man, so. oh, that barbecue in Texas was crazy. Blacks? Blacks oh. barbecue, Terry Blacks? Nah, no, we went to a place called Pinkerton's. Pinkerton's, bro. They got a location in San Antonio and Houston. Okay. Bro. That shit hour was I have heard about Blacks though. I need to yeah, try that. Yeah. It was an hour line just to get that shit. Stroud was napping. He came back with ribs. I was like, oh my god. He share? Yes, of course. Okay. Yeah, okay. he came back with brisket. Yeah. I finished my ribs, lyrics. I finished my verses for the Dabfish album faster than everybody else. I had Allie to, needed to take a nap and reflect on his nap. life. <laughs> I couldn't sleep on that dang plane. Oh. Yeah, planes are rough for big guys. Oh yeah, we, I, we, oh, we've been getting man. some good luck though. I don't never use we, my seatbelt. Because it, it would fit under my stomach anyway. Dude. And I dare you to lift my stomach up, bitch. I get the seatbelt extender. Like, I'm the same. It'll it'll click, but it'll be, like, hella up. tight. I'm like, oh, my Honestly, God. Honestly, when I think about it, like, I'm going to get cut in half by that motherfucker. I'd yeah. rather just break my neck. Straight up. <laughs> if we haven't got the fucking either the extra seat in the middle between yeah. the both of us or been upgraded to big seats, we just pray to the flight gods. <laughs> and low-key, we've been having some good flight yeah. luck. I ain't going to lie. No my more of that. No, we ain't winging it. Yeah, no. <laughs> spirit, I damn near need a whole fucking rope. Bro, that we, shit is like we, tic tacs. We, we can only go spirit if we get the big seats in the front. Yeah, you know what I'm sure, saying? There's four sure. of them, and we take up all of them. You need to be flying out. Yeah, book the water boys. Expect to be getting some big yeah. seats for some big boys. Straight up, we fly yeah. economy or first. Hell yeah. We ain't flying no more fucking. Or exit row. That's what yeah. I'm about. <laughs> I want to give a big shout out to all of our sponsors, but especially the Humboldt Humidors. Uh, These guys are fucking fire. It is is veteran assembled. They're great for when you have like multiple flavors. I think it would be great for like a head stash of rosin, even if you just threw it in the fridge. Like there's, I don't see any problem with it. You don't necessarily need this in there. You know, it could just be a cool storage box. This could be your head stash. You're good to go. Um, I like that it locks. Keep the kids out of your turfs, people. Well, yeah. and, you, and you throw it in the car. You can throw it in the back seat. Nobody <laughs> can search it. You know, if you lock it. True. So that, Science. that's that, <laughs> these come out. <laughs> Science. Science. These come out, so you could actually have this as one big thing. You can put your fucking Glock in that motherfucker. Straight up. Put your Glock in your turfs. <laughs> Glock turfs. Couple backwood packs. Hell yeah. One thing with guns is my dad was an avid hunter, always had a mm. gun on him. You know, I was taught yeah. shooting, hunter safety. Gun. I got my hunting license when I was 10 years old. Cali been shooting at people since he was 13 <laughs> years old. Mean Streets of Stockton. He used to Stockton. sell dope in the lunch I line. Knows. I don't sell. 
nothing, and I never shot allegedly. No human. Allegedly, <laughs> there ain't nothing on his permanent record that you can point to yeah. to prove that. Feel me? You're Damn. right. I'm out here snitching. <laughs> you know, you're just a you're just a Chad calling people out, yeah. bro. You know? Why don't you be more of a Brad? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Fuck Brad. <laughs> <laughs> can you guys give me some of the voice? Can you do like a voice from the from the Water Boys? I, I feel like it's just my voice. <laughs> I don't know. Is, it, isn't it? My favorite part in Turbo Wars is when I'm like, <laughs> get to the chopper. <laughs> oh, he's like, shut up, Arnold. <laughs> my favorite part is when we wake up from dabbing and you're like, whoa, bro, did we do anything? <laughs> and I'm like, no, bro. And then fucking Brad, yeah, it's Brad is fucking it's, it's a Trill Solo. Trill Solo, yeah. He said, oh, no. You guys smoked all the sour mango. <laughs> I thought that part was all funny. Like, oh, did we do man. anything? <laughs> nah. Yeah, bro. I think they definitely did something. Oh. Now this is characters. This isn't you guys. So I think I think they might be a little force curious. <laughs> oh my god. Is that how you wrote them, Bob? That's Brad's writing. <laughs> That's <laughs> canon, That's motherfucker. Brad. That's a Brad canon. writing all kinds of gay shit. If you listen to his words and shit, he be trying to tell the people something. Yeah. If you try to, if you. Try uh, to- <laughs> He's trying to tell the people something. <laughs> we're not gonna, we're not gonna call that. We're not gonna call Brad out like that. You know? We could. He's putting in the work right now, bro. He's doing that work. No one else. And just because he's might be whatever, that? don't mean he's you know not working. You can dab on the beach. That's what stuck in my head since it came up on the show. The remix. The remix is gonna go crazy. Remix. Trap house coda and Mabo Robo. <laughs> Dabbing on Hash Hole Island. So, I haven't yet ripped the prison water mm. pipe uh, really? with a purple chewy out of Sanctuary Farms, but I'm about to. <laughs> Will you guys count me down? Three, two, one. Oh, man. Three, two, two one. Blast off. You want to get really title. mind blowing? So, you know, you obviously know what Brad looks like, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Have you ever seen him like and Rasputin picture. in the same room together? Real talk, though. Rasputin. He was carrying a bat, dog. <laughs> Damn, they bro. got his dick in a museum, bro. Really? Oh, my God. I no could way. be so happy if my dick ended up in a museum. Let me Damn. tell you that. I guarantee you. Tell me that ain't, bro. Nobody in this room's dick is going to be in a museum. I'm just telling you that right <laughs> yeah, now. He's my, I heard it's a little whatever. <laughs> he's made jokes about it on the songs. He's got one song where he says, I ain't insecure. My dick is small. <laughs> <laughs> Does he really? Damn, that's what all funny. What song is that one? It's called Get Rich with a maze. That's how. I don't funny. need a bitch or a fast car. I ain't insecure. My dick is small. <laughs> it didn't even rhyme there. Uh, no, I gotta some, get it. Gotta rhyme. Sometimes you just gotta get the truth out, you know? You Sometimes you don't need to rhyme. You just be spitting, you know? Am I triggering her down? Yeah. All right. All right, guys. I think we're going to do one final dab to close out the night. Callie, yeah. dealer's choice, sir. Let's see what we smoking on here. Chad, what you recommend out of the stack? Lime wire. That feel good. Some fire. Tis some stupidly fire. I guess you got some of that at home though, so you probably. That's what I'm saying. You don't got. I was hoping you could pick some of that guy. I've tried. Did your, you hit that white thorn? Your stack. I think I did try that. I almost fought. You did. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That was I want to make sure you do. I'm gonna go with this rainbow taffy. Nice. Who's that from? Symbiotics, genetics, and West Coast. Okay. Mm. Let me smell on that. This looks crazy. What is it again? The Rainbow Taffy. Rainbow Taffy. West Coast Alchemy Symbiotic Genetic. Yeah, that smells real nice. Real candy. So I'm stupid. Mm. So while we get this uh, banger heated up, Callie, why don't you tell people where they can find you? Man, you can find me at LT underscore K A L I underscore 209 on Instagram, man. Lieutenant Cali on all platforms. It's LT dot K A L I, man. Whole lot of Water Boys shit in the motherfucking building, man. It's the Water Boys. You can find the Water Boys at, at the Water Boys with a Z. Two of them. Two. 710. Dude. 710. And we will definitely tag you guys in the oh, in our yeah. posts and in our uh, notes in the show. So make sure you go Hell there and yeah. follow them. Keep your eyes out for any more national hash hole events. Yes. I think they're going to be rolling out nationwide more often. CGO doing his thing, man. Shouts out. He's you know, national. Hash hole. Day. Everywhere. <laughs>
Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Uh, also, big shout out to MJ Matze. He's throwing on the Rolling Olympics down, yeah. and he's doing like the the Museum of Rolling down there. Super. Dope, um, I don't. Man. I don't know if that's all him. I don't want to, you know, give I'm, anybody no credit, I'm but like, you know, I know it's he's part of it. Uh, he he's a homie. He's doing some fucking crazy rolls out there. So yeah, tell him, man. hey, tell him, Big Casino said, "What's oh, yeah. up?" That's that's he made the boy. Some rolls of boy. us at Hashel Island. Yeah, he rolled that's right. Us. I forgot about <laughs> that. That was tight. That's what I say. That's we'll, the dog, we'll try to bro. send me a picture of that before you guys smoked it down. I'll try oh, to post yeah. that. Really appreciate you guys coming on. Any any products that people need to check out uh, coming out from Waterboys? We got heady swabs. We got uh, Terp Slurper from Toro's Dude, coming. Toro collab coming. Check out our website, We got Crazy Mood Match. Yeah, we got website, all kinds of merch. We got custom uh, jerseys coming. Tight. We got a Hash bunch of Terp has. Wars merch coming. Limited. I, Everything's limited. If you yeah. see something from us, swoop it because you're never going to see that colorway again. You might Everywhere. see something similar, but it will not be the same. We're dropping one-on-ones, you know what I'm saying? I need to pick up a Waterboys jersey for oh, show. Bro, big oh, casino yeah. on the, the back, show. baby. You know hey, what I'm if saying? I can, if I can request a number of 13. Oh, bro, yeah. No, that's my number, bro. Right, right bro. there, bro. That's hey. my number. Friday the 13th, born and <laughs> raised, you know? That's my day, so. That's tight. I got Jer- robbed on Friday the 13th one time. I was at a party. You got shot at Friday the And they the straight 13th. up, man, I was, my homie got robbed. My homie got stabbed. They pulled hella straps out on me. Oh, we at the same party? <laughs> Yo, I don't know. Bro, this shit was wild. Though. Was it at a party? Yeah, I was on the south side, bro. I was on 5th Street. What was I doing what partying was on 5th Street? I want to say, like, uh, 2009, 2008. <coughs> I don't think I was there. You would have been young, because I was young. <coughs> That's crazy. That would have been hella funny. We need some throw some water out on that party. On Friday the thirteenth, though. That's hella funny. Yeah, I mean, if you guys were fucking with me on Friday the thirteenth, you're cool. You know what I mean? That's the luckiest day of the year for me. You might say I got robbed on Saturday the fourteenth. I would then. But it was yeah. midnight. I definitely would say that. I would lean towards the fourteenth for sure. It felt like it was the bad karma of the thirteenth, though. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But it's actually it's actually the thirteenth that saved you. It was once it went to the fourteenth. You were yeah. fucked, bro. <laughs> Yeah, beware Saturday the 14th they always beware. say uh, so Toro you got the uh, heady swabs you got the dab mats coming out where can, pe- can people pick those up everything's on, on website, the website man. we got the website the link's in our bio do not go to waterboyswiths.com or to waterboys with three z's Waterboys with the S is a weird website. We have Don't. no affiliation with it. None do not search it. Ever. Do not enter the registry. <laughs> do not do anything with that website. I can imagine. Okay. I'm going to give you a, a chance to start fresh, but I can only imagine what the fuck is on that website. <laughs> oh, you want me to tell you? No. Oh. No, please don't. I'll look it up later. Thank oh. you. Oh. Our website is the Waterboys with a Z710.myshopify.com. Tight. Check that out. Go pick up all their merch. Get it now. Get it while it's online because it won't be up again. Never. Guys, I appreciate you stopping by, smoking down some Sanctuary Farms. Again, thanks to Ju and Elisa yep. for hooking us up with all these flavors. We'll bring you some more. We got plenty to go around, and, and the next time I sit down with a guest, we're going to have it on the table. Big shout out to Jay with Elbow Farms. Yup, Elbow with some gas. Hell yeah. You know, I, I stay with the local, uh, the Contra Casa. That's where I was born and raised. We got to fuck with them. The Sanctuary Farms, they're good people. We got to fuck Hell with them. Yeah, they're going to be in Delta Boys hopefully soon, so keep your eye out for them. Fire. Again, a big shout-out to our friends over at Flower Mill. Hi, Toki Laser. Hi, Toki, man. That's how I was smoking on this fire flower. Prism Water Pipes. Mm. As uh, my co-host Mikey Teb would say, play Legos with your bongs, friends. Yeah. And Humboldt Humidors, thanks for sending us out this super tight humidor for all of our flavors on the show. That thing's pimp. Yeah, I really appreciate you guys. It's all customized. This isn't the only color they get. I would love to see a fucking Water Boys. Oh, yeah. Like maybe a smaller, insulated hash one. <laughs> that'd that be dope. Cool. And, and, you know, they're all assembled by veterans. Any purchase oh. you make on any of these websites with the code Weed Between the Wines, uh, you know, you're going to help me out and you're going to get a discount. But if you do it on Humboldt Humidors, you're going to get 15% back to the vets. So we no, appreciate everything no. they do for us. Yes. And uh, Mabo. Yes. Bubbly Brook. Appreciate you guys stopping by. This has been Big Casino with Weed Between the Wines. Shout out Big Casino. Shout yeah. out Cali. Shout out Mills Nutrients. Shout hey, out Grove yeah. Bags. Those are our sponsors. Shout out Brad. Hey, oh, you know what? He put it all together, us being here tonight. Uh, he's he's the guru of the of the crew room. Oh god. But, the crew room, but no. for real, hey, he's a real one. So we appreciate you. Straight up. Next time you're uh, you're in town, we'll have you in studio. So Gasol. appreciate Yay. you guys making the trip down. This is my big casino with another quick sesh on 
weed Ray between the wires. Damn, Ramos, you snap. I gave my pieces out in Cali. I ain't never been in Georgia. Neighborhood weed, and hit me up. I'm feeling orders. Roll another joint fatter, because this one's over. Candy aroma with the ice cream odor. Light it up. This has been a production of Joint Venture Media.